con la raccomandazione dell'onorevole Pabrix, accordo economico e commerciale globale tra il Canada e l'Unione Europea, e la dichiarazione della Commissione, la conclusione del SETA Unione Europea-Canada, e la raccomandazione dell'onorevole Tannock, accordo di partenariato strategico tra l'Unione Europea e il Canada. Il primo intervento è quello dell'onorevole relatore Pabrix. Thank you, President, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, sometime before 2009, in one of the major provinces of Canada, Quebec, there was born the idea about CETA. Today, we have the day when we can decide how to go forward with this deal. I would say it's a judgment day, because since 2016, uh, we have been discussing in European Parliament more than 18 times in different large groups what this trade deal really means for us. There have been, we have been taking into account most, if not all, of concerns that have been raised by analyzing the previous trade deals with other countries, and I think that we can with great confidence say that this trade deal is in many ways a golden standard for future trade deals in the world. Now, I also would like to say that... Uh, uh, thank you. Time is running. Ladies and gentlemen, I also would like to say that CETA is a litmus test for our European Union policies. We are standing on the crossroads, and we can take one of the two directions. The first direction is protectionism, provincialism, decline and building of walls. Do we really want it? I don't think so. At least I don't want this. The second direction is the openness to the world. It is a leadership. It is effective decision making. It is a growth. And finally, also the bringing of wealth to our union and each and every nation and member state here in European continent. Of course, such a trade deal is not a cure, a medicine for each and every disease. We must understand that. It is comprehensive, but it will not solve all the problems that our workers, small and medium enterprises and people are facing. It is not meant to do this. And this is why I would like to say to those who are not listening the facts, but following the alternative news and not trying to go into the depths of this uh, analysis of this trade deal. Please do not bark at the wrong tree. Try to find other solutions for other existing problems, but go forward with this deal. As far as the CETA, it has two very, very important aspects for us included in this deal. One is geopolitical aspect, Another is purely trade and economic aspect. As far as the geopolitics, Canadian nations have been always standing by the same values like we do stand here in Europe. There are no other nation outside the European Union so like us, like Canadians. Maybe I sometimes even think maybe they are even closer to us than maybe some of our members from time to time. It was an, a little bit of a joke. They have been sending their soldiers in the First World War to defend our freedoms and our liberties. They have been dying in the Second World War for our freedoms and liberties. And also now, when the European Union are facing security challenges at its external borders, Canadian soldiers again are on our sandy beaches in Northern Europe. Thank you to Canada for this. Secondly, if we are speaking a part of geopolitics about economy, there are a number of things which this trade deal will deliver. It will deliver trade in goods and decreased tariffs. It will deliver additional um, possibilities for services. It will give us a possibility to join procurement in Canada, which never have been before. Geographic indications, a lot of geographic indications for many of our producers. And of course, the investment part. So, from that perspective, I would say that every country, just like my small country, Latvia, will benefit out of this. Our products, which are now sold in Canada, 
Latvian products, for instance, and also Swedish or German or French products will be cheaper between 8 to 12 percent uh, after the trade deal will be passed. It's a good thing. World is watching us. World is watching European Union. Which direction we will take? Will we take the direction of protectionism and closeness? Or we will fight for liberal democratic values, for growth and for the new golden standards of international trade. It's a unique chance for the European Union now to take again a leading position in the global economy and global politics. And in many ways the vote for CETA will decide about this. Never before the world needed such a strong Europe at this moment and it needs a guidelines for good trade. CETA is like a lighthouse for these guidelines for many who are searching for a wealth and trade. Please do not switch out this light. Vote for CETA. Uh, Mr. President, Canada enjoys one of the closest possible relationships with the European Union. It's a country that shares a common culture. C'est un pays bilingue, with two EU languages as national languages, and has a healthy respect for democracy and the rule of law. That we are set to ratify the Strategic Partnership Agreement and CETA later today demonstrates the value that we in the European Union place on that strong, traditional, lengthy relationship. Canada, with its similar levels of GDP per capita as an advanced economy and a NATO member state, further cements ties and mutual interests. For example, there are two extracts from the SPA that in my mind sum up exactly what this is all about and what it stands for. The parties shall implement this agreement based on shared values, the principles of dialogue, mutual respect, equal partnership, multilateralism, consensus, and respect for international law. The second extract reads, recognizing that sustainable globalization and greater prosperity can only be achieved through an open world economy based on market principles, effective regulations, and strong global institutions. I think these two paragraphs sum it all up. And that's exactly what the SPA and CETA are all about. Ambitious, free trade, and liberal multilateralism. These are the values that they seek to embody and defend at a time when they need defending more than at any other time in the European Union's recent history. Whilst my main area of concern as Rapporteur is the SPA, it's important that we consider this alongside CETA, or to give it its full name, the EU-Canada Comprehensive Economic and Trade Agreement, and the wider international political climate in which we now found us, find ourselves. Whether we look to the election of President Donald Trump in the United States, or in my personal view, the regrettable decision of my country, the United Kingdom, to leave the European Union, or the rise of populist protectionist parties across Europe, it's clear that the merits of free trade, multilateralism, and the liberal international world order is being unfortunately questioned by many, and we must stand up and fight for it. Such questions can only be answered by concrete results. This means increasing trade, creating economic growth, providing jobs, and creating a safe and secure world. The SPA and CETA will hopefully do exactly these things and, can illustrate, and I can illustrate what can be achieved by defending these values that they are based on. To focus on some of the overlying headlines of the SPA and the areas where coordination of efforts is envisaged, I'll take a few areas of particular interest. For instance, preventing nuclear proliferation, ensuring the effective working of the International Criminal Court, now increasingly challenged, strengthening counter-terrorism efforts and combating the financing of international terrorism, enforcing consumer protection, fighting the trade in illicit drugs, tackling cybercrime and discussing the high North Arctic strategy increasingly threatened by an expansionist Russia, to name but a few examples of what is envisaged in the SPA. But much of what we see in the SBA is in fact the development of long-standing links and coordination. I'm proud to say that 2017 marks the 40th anniversary of the initial political agreement between Canada and the European Union all the way back to 1977, a testament to the long and enduring links that both sides share. 
It was only a year later that I, as a student, found myself living for several months in 1978 in Canada and appreciating firsthand the strong bonds and common culture that bind us together. Existing cooperation between Canada and the EU and its member states spans a number of key policy areas. For example, the Europol Agreement, active since 2005, which provides a valuable vehicle for the sharing of data and information in the fight against international crime and terrorism. Canada's consistent military contributions to the common security and defence policy of the European Union. Canadian parliamentarians, whom we meet frequently when they participate in joint electoral observation missions with the OSCE and NATO parliamentary assemblies. Furthermore, the visa liberalisation agreement in place since, since 2015 will now be completed and extended to the entire European Union as agreed. Trump's attitude to NATO and NAFTA will also bind Canada closer to the European Union on both defence and commercial policies. The EU already enjoys close political and trade relations with Mexico, making it a reliable ally against any US attempts to undermine NAFTA. And although the United Kingdom is leaving the European Union, unfortunately, Malta and Cyprus will still provide an important Commonwealth link. So to conclude, Mr. Chairman, the SPA comes at a time of increasing scepticism of free trade and multilateralism among certain elements of the political class and voters. I believe that the European Union and Canada's strong relationship and record of cooperation can therefore be a much needed poster child at this critical time for these values and that the benefits and prosperity brought by increased trade and cooperation fostered by these agreements are both in Europe's and Canada's mutual interests. Thank you. Come sapete, le regole sono sempre uguali per tutti. Se sono flessibili in occasione di certi dibattiti nei confronti di alcuni parlamentari, lo sono anche nei confronti degli altri. Quindi se sono flessibili è sempre stato così e così sarà anche oggi. Vi prego certamente di non abusare della flessibilità. Now, the next speaker is the Commissioner Mastrom. You have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. President, honourable ladies and gentlemen, members. First of all, I would like to uh, extend my deepest sympathy to the Canadian people for the terror attack they suffered two weeks ago. Je suis Québécois, nous sommes tous Québécois. With Canada, we share the democratic values of openness and tolerance. We cooperate in tackling common challenges such as migration, sustainable development, climate change and terrorism. The two agreements that we are discussing here today, the Free Trade Agreement, CETA, and the Strategic Partnership Agreement, together offer an opportunity to upgrade our EU-Canada relationship. Those agreements strengthen both our economic relations and our geopolitical alliance, reflecting our partnership, both unique and distinctive, making that partnership deeper and more powerful, reaffirming our fundamental values, political principles, and using them to shape globalization with an institutional framework that allows for deeper exchange to help each side serve its citizens in the 21st century. CETA will benefit EU citizens and business. Exports to Canada today support around 900,000 European jobs. But the 70,000, a little bit more, EU companies who export to Canada face many obstacles. These obstacles are particularly burdensome for the small and medium-sized companies, which are about 80% of the total. And CETA helps those companies in many ways. It removes almost all tariffs from day one. Exporters save, stand to save over 500 million a year. That's a lot of money, especially for the small companies. It also cuts red tape, the lengthy customs and duplicative certification procedures with which small businesses can ill afford. It opens up markets in services and public procurements on all levels. And it protects over 140 of the most traded geographical indications, helping European farmers sell more of their high quality products in Canada. Trade policy is about opening markets, but it is also about our values. So CETA is a progressive agreement with a progressive partner upholding our standards, protecting our sensitivities, 
Nothing in this agreement undermines a government's right to regulate in the public interest. Nothing in this agreement affects the safety of food we eat or the products we buy. Nothing prevents governments from providing public services or bringing these services back to the public domain if they have been privatized. Nothing requires privatization of water or health care. And nothing changes the prerogative of EU lawmakers to set EU rules under EU procedures. In particular, decision-making in the CETA Joint Committee cannot circumvent or derogate from EU treaty requirements, in particularly the role of EU institutions in making policy. CETA will not change food safety standards or any other EU requirements. Only the EU institutions can do that, and Member States may also be adopting relevant legislation for that. The Commission will fully abide by EU internal processes as defined by the treaties before taking any position in the CETA committee. And there can be no doubt that the role of this Parliament will both fully respected and your contribution also welcomed. I know this Parliament has concerned and had concerned about the private ad hoc arbitration known as the Investment, Investor State Dispute Resolution, ISDS. So we have reformed it. And your role here has been critical in shaping the new investment court system. This new system guarantees government's right to regulate. It uses public courts, qualified judges, transparent proceedings, an appeal mechanism and a strict code of ethics. And this parliament will be involved in selecting its tribunal members similar to its involvement for ECJ judges. And as you know, with Canada, we are right now working on the international scene to promote the idea of a multilateral investment court. CETA is a modern, new kind of agreement, promoting our values of free, fair and sustainable trade. Canada and EU pledges to effectively implement major international agreements on labour and environment. These provisions are ambitious, but they are also binding and legally enforceable. And they are having an effect. Canada is on the path to ratify the last outstanding core labour convention on collective bargaining. The agreement contains a mechanism to review these provisions, notably on enforcement. And I commit, as I have written to you in letters, to set in motion this review mechanism soon after CETA is provisionally applied. And to feed into this review, I intend to open a broad and inclusive debate on sustainable development provisions in our free trade agreements, involving all stakeholders, including, of course, this Parliament. The strategic partnership agreement accompanies and complements CETA, reinforcing our partnership, deepening contacts and coordination in areas like foreign security and defence policy, migration, counter-terrorism, human rights, sustainable development, climate change, areas where we can work and we are already working together to make life better for our citizens and promote a progressive international agenda rooted in our principles. Honourable members, we are at a time where many stand against what the EU stands for. Openness, international cooperation, freedom to trade, etc. And those who oppose those principles often also question the foundation and the future of the EU itself. And against those trends, we have the chance to work with like-minded partners to show that protectionism does not work. Putting up barriers, building walls is not the answer. But good, efficient, fair trade agreements with like-minded partners, that is the answer. And this is the opportunity we have today by consenting to the two agreements. And I would like to end by thanking so much the Rapporteur, Mr. Fabrix, and of course Mr. Tannik on the Strategic Partnership Agreement, and the Shadows, and many more who have worked during this long time for this agreement. I am looking forward to the debate and hopefully a successful vote. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Commissioner Marstrom. The next speaker is for the as Mr. Tannock, another time for only one minute, please. Uh, one minute? I thought I had two minutes. One minute? Okay. Well, as I've already mentioned, the SPA will have an important role with the security. We saw attempts at the passenger name record agreement to go before this parliament. It was referred to the ECJ. I hope that that eventually comes to fruition. 
There's also the creation of a joint ministerial council and joint consultative council for the first time, which will enable senior policy makers on both sides of the Atlantic to exchange ideas. And how to, how to mitigate the effects of climate change. Canada and the European Union will have to look at this very carefully, particularly with the risk of the melting of the ice sheets in the high north and the increased migratory pressures from sub-Saharan Africa impacting on the EU with climate change, a very important common shared challenge. President Trump's repeated threats to pull America out of the Paris Climate Change Agreement means an additional threat to global stability, which the EU together with Canada will have to face together. Lastly, the SBN CETA will become the model for the European Union to conduct future advanced close trade and political relations with third country partners, including in all probability the so-called bespoke deal between the European Union currently envisaged by the U with the UK and, and the British government after Brexit. So let's hope that this is a successful model so that the UK itself can negotiate something similar after Brexit. Thank you. Per la Commissione per l'occupazione degli affari sociali, la parola all'onorevole Pirinsky. President, the EMPL Committee, in its opinion of December 8th last, stressed that decent job creation, balanced wage increases, and expanded entrepreneurship possibilities must be the defining criteria for giving consent for the conclusion of CETA. The Committee, however, found that the agreement seriously fails, short, falls short of all three scores. Real-world models and assessments indicate no more than a 0.018% increase in overall EU employment over six to ten years, with significant sectoral dislocations and increases in long-term unemployment. Income gaps are projected to widen between skilled and unskilled workers. There is no single chapter with specific measures in favor of SMEs. And finally, the privileged status of investors under the investment court system stands in stark contrast to the mere consultations envisaged for protecting labor interests and rights. Hence, the Committee's recommendation for Parliament is to decline giving its consent for the conclusion of CETA. Thank you. A nome della Commissione per l'Ambiente, la facoltà di parlare, l'onorevole Stais. Thank you, Voorzitter. Collega's, de Commissie Milieu, Volksgezondheid en Voedselveiligheid adviseert met een grote meerderheid om CETA goed te keuren. Als rapporteur probeerde ik op een eerlijke, maar kritische manier CETA te evalueren. Ik nam daarbij als uitgangspunt onze resolutie van april 2015 over TTIP. En mijn inziens voldoet CETA op vier voorwaarden niet. 1. Er is geen expliciete vermelding voor het voorzorgsbeginsel. 2. De regelgevende samenwerking, weliswaar vrijwillig, is niet beperkt tot wel bepaalde sectoren waar de EU en Canada een gelijk beschermingsniveau hebben. 3. CETA bevat bepalingen over publieke en sociale diensten die de beslissingsruimte van de lidstaten aantasten. 4. CETA bevat bepalingen die onze GGO-wetgeving op termijn ondermijnt. Daarenboven is er het ICS, arbitragemechanisme, dat zorgt voor een parallele juridictie voor buitenlandse investeerders, waarbij de soevereiniteit van lidstaten wordt aangetast. Verder uitte ik als rapporteur bezorgdheid over de bepalingen in zaken chemische middelenwetgeving, de negatieve lijst in zaken publieke en sociale diensten, de ondermijning van de standaarden in zaken pesticidenresidus, de regelgeving in zaken hormoonverstoorders, de bedreiging van de riek tot vork aanpak in de voedselveiligheid en de kwalijke bepalingen met invloed op ons klimaat- en energiebeleid. Collega's, een overgrote meerderheid van collega's in de Envi-commissie had daar geen oren naar, ondanks de bezwaren van miljoenen burgers. Ik moet u dus namens als rapporteur aanbevelen CETA goed te keuren. Zelf zal ik wellicht tegenstemmen. Dank u. Oggi è un dibattito particolarmente delicato. Tutti avranno la possibilità 
di esprimere le proprie idee e le proprie posizioni. Quindi vi prego di rispettare da una parte e dall'altra gli oratori che sostengono tesi differenti dalle vostre. Quindi non tocca al Presidente decidere quale deve essere la posizione del Parlamento, sarà l'Aula sovrana oggi durante il voto a decidere quale sarà la posizione del Parlamento. Passiamo ora agli interventi a nome dei gruppi. Il primo è quello dell'onorevole Weber per il Partito Popolare Europeo. Herr Präsident, Frau Kommissarin, liebe Kolleginnen und Kollegen, ich glaube, wir spüren schon in den ersten Minuten, um was es heute geht. Es geht um die Diskussion zwischen Gefühlen, zwischen Angst machen und zwischen Fakten. Wir werden nachher der Kollegin Le Pen zuhören. Wir werden nachher der Kollegin... Jeder darf hier seine Meinung sagen, oder? Und jeder darf zuhören, oder? Okay? Wenn, liebe Kolleginnen und Kollegen, wenn, liebe Kolleginnen und Kollegen, nachher die Kollegin Le Pen das Wort ergreifen wird, dann wird sie... Angst machen vor Handel. Sie wird sagen, dass äh, sie Kanada ablehnt, sie wird sagen, dass sie Australien ablehnt, sie wird sagen, dass sie Neuseeland ablehnt. Sie will eine komplette Abschottung Frankreichs herbeiführen und sie macht den Menschen Angst, den Bauern, den Arbeitnehmern, so wie wir das erlebt haben. Und ich sage dazu, es gibt diese Modelle, gab es ja bereits. In Europa gab es bereits Länder, die sich komplett abgeschottet haben, beispielsweise Albanien unter dem Diktator, der komplett alle Grenzen aufgebaut hat. Le Pen will aus Frankreich ein großes Albanien machen, das, in die Zukunft, das nicht in die Zukunft geführt wird, sondern das sich abschotten will. Liebe Kolleginnen und Kollegen, wir als EVP-Fraktion glauben an die Fakten. Wir glauben an Fakten. Und wenn wir zum Beispiel auf Südkorea blicken, das letzte Abkommen, das wir abgeschlossen haben, vor fünf Jahren, liebe Kollegin Le Pen und liebe Kollegen, hat zu einer Exportsteigerung von 55 Prozent geführt. 17 Milliarden Euro wurden mehr exportiert. Es hat 14.000 neue Jobs geschaffen. Insgesamt 30 Millionen Jobs in Europa hängen am Export. Das sind Fakten. Und da kann man natürlich Emotionen dagegen setzen. Wir als EVP glauben weiter an die Fakten. Ich bedanke mich bei der Kommissarin Malmström für ihre engagierte Arbeit. Das ist ein tolles Abkommen, das Sie uns heute vorgelegt haben. Dank auch der Bürgerbeteiligung der Verbraucherschutzverbände, der Gewerkschaften ist es gelungen, die Sorgen aufzunehmen und viele Sorgen auch zu entkräften. Und ich muss auch deutlich machen, mit wem sollen wir denn überhaupt noch Gespräche führen können, wenn wir nicht mit Kanada, einem hochentwickelten, demokratischen, partnerschaftlichen Land, Gespräche führt und diese Gespräche auch entsprechend abschließen kann. Liebe Kolleginnen und Kollegen, ich muss leider auch etwas parteipolitisch werden in der Debatte, weil wir natürlich wissen müssen, wer führt dieses Parlament und wer führt in die Zukunft dieses Kontinents. Und Gianni, da muss ich leider Gottes feststellen, dass die sozialdemokratische Fraktion zutiefst gespalten ist. Die sozialdemokratische Fraktion kann keine Orientierung geben, wie es in Europa weitergeht. Die Hälfte ist für CETA, die andere Hälfte ist gegen CETA. Und die Grünen, liebe Kolleginnen und Kollegen, die Grünen müssen sich ganz kritisch die Frage stellen lassen, ob sie denn in guter Gesellschaft sind, wenn sie mit Le Pen und den Kommunisten gleichzeitig Stimmung machen gegen CETA. Diese Frage muss man stellen dürfen. Ich glaube, dass die Grünen und die Verbraucherschutzverbände viele wichtige Debatten geführt haben. Aber jetzt sollten Sie auch anerkennen, dass wir auf einem guten Weg sind und dass das Abkommen ein gutes Abkommen ist. Und zu guter Letzt, zu guter Letzt zwei kurze Punkte. Das eine, Entscheidungsprozess. Ich glaube, wir müssen feststellen, wenn wir CETA uns vergegenwärtigen, dass wir zukünftig klare Zuständigkeiten in Europa brauchen. Die Diskussion um die Wallonie, wir respektieren jedes Parlament in Europa als EVP. Uns ist Föderalismus, Regionalität wichtig. Aber wir brauchen Zuständigkeiten, die klar sind in der Zukunft, dass die Menschen wissen, wenn Europa Freihandel diskutiert, dann muss auch das Europaparlament der Ort sein, wo über CETA zukünftig final und einzig und allein abgestimmt wird. Und zu guter Letzt, liebe Kolleginnen und Kollegen, das ganz große Bild, das ganz große Bild ist, dass wir Donald Trump haben. Und Donald Trump hat TPP gekündigt. Er will Mauern bauen. Und liebe Kolleginnen und Kollegen, wir als Europäer wollen an diesem Tag deutlich machen, mit dieser Abstimmung heute deutlich machen, dass wir nicht Mauern aufbauen wollen, sondern wir wollen Brücken bauen, wir wollen Partnerschaft und deswegen wird meine Fraktion für CETA stimmen. Dankeschön. Durante gli interventi dei rappresentanti dei gruppi non concederò blue card. Perché, ripeto, è un dibattito delicato e invito tutti quanti a rispettare le idee degli altri. Questo è... Ogni... Onorevole Corrao, 
ogni, or, ogni, ogni gruppo avrà facoltà di esprimere le proprie idee e le proprie posizioni. Questa è la democrazia, quindi vi prego di rispettare i vostri colleghi, anche se esprimono idee differenti dalle vostre. La parola all'onorevole Pittella, a nome del gruppo dell'Alleanza Progressista di Socialisti e Democratici. Grazie, Presidente. Signora Commissaria, colleghi, ho ascoltato toni trionfalistici che non condivido e ho ascoltato da ultimo provocazioni del collega Weber che non sono rispettose del dibattito libero, franco e serrato che c'è stato nel gruppo dei socialisti e dei democratici. Il mio gruppo Chiede, il mio gruppo chiede rispetto. Noi non siamo una caserma e non lo saremo mai. Voglio dire, subito, voglio dire subito che per noi socialisti e democratici il CETA non è un modello, ma è solo l'inizio di un cambio nella politica commerciale europea. C'è chi pensa che ciò che sta accadendo nel mondo non debba condizionare, influenzare le nostre riflessioni, che si possa andare avanti mettendo la testa sotto la sabbia. Noi non siamo tra costoro. Trump non è Obama. E noi dobbiamo riflettere su ciò che sta avvenendo. Trump ha approfittato di una visione ingenua della globalizzazione di accordi commerciali pensati solo per interessi di grandi imprese. Contro questa visione della globalizzazione i nostri elettori si stanno rivoltando. Ecco, noi sosteniamo CETA in quanto parte di una presa di coscienza che serve una nuova politica commerciale. In questi mesi ci va dato atto ci siamo impegnati per migliorare CETA e anche grazie al nostro lavoro oggi abbiamo un accordo migliore del passato. Abbiamo superato l'ISDS che, se non modificato, sarebbe stato il cavallo di Troia con cui le multinazionali avrebbero insidiato i nostri sistemi giuridici. Al suo posto ora c'è un meccanismo con un appello con giudici al di sopra di qualsiasi conflitto di interessi. Ed è anche grazie al nostro lavoro, dei socialisti, se i servizi pubblici non saranno toccati, così come i diritti dei lavoratori. Questi miglioramenti li abbiamo potuti ottenere grazie anche al lavoro della Commissaria e soprattutto grazie ad un partner, il Canada, a cui ci legano valori e speranze comuni, un Paese con cui condividiamo l'ambizione di costruire un nuovo sistema multilaterale più democratico, una globalizzazione positiva diversa da quella perseguita sino ad ora. E ringrazio il Premier Trudeau, che sappiamo essere con noi in questa battaglia contro i virus del populismo e dell'isolazionismo. Questo accordo è per noi l'inizio, ma occorre una più ampia e limpida agenda progressista del commercio internazionale, sulla base della quale noi valuteremo gli accordi futuri a partire da quello tra Unione Europea e Giappone. Noi non daremo più il nostro voto se non ci sarà una nuova agenda progressista sulla politica commerciale. E non tollereremo mai più che ci siano strumenti di soluzione alle controversie simili alle, alle SDS. Vogliamo maggiore trasparenza nei negoziati, vogliamo che l'adesione agli standard più avanzati in, in materia di diritti dei lavoratori diventi la norma. Insomma, il nostro sostegno non è un voto per conservare, ma un voto per cambiare. È un modo per ascoltare le preoccupazioni dei nostri cittadini. Vogliamo cambiare questa globalizzazione, non vogliamo subirla. Per il gruppo dei conservatori e riformisti, la parola all'onorevole Kamal. So what is the Canada-EU trade agreement CETA really about? Well, it's about new jobs created by Polish fruit exporters or Italian tie makers facing lower barriers to selling their products in Canada. It's about cheaper prices and more choice for consumers. It's about allowing our small businesses to bid for public procurement contracts in Canada. 
My ECR group supports CETA and other trade agreements because international trade is between willing sellers in one country and willing buyers in another country. Opponents of international trade will often highlight the losses, but they fail to point to the often larger gains which are dispersed across the nation or across international borders. Now, I'm not saying that we should ignore these legitimate concerns. We should encourage lifelong learning programs for workers in declining companies and sectors to retrain for new roles in the face of globalization and new technology. We should address the concerns of both Canadians and citizens of EU countries who accuse each other of having lower environmental and labour standards. Both can't be right. And we should also remind the anti-capitalists over there and the anti-globalisation movement over here that they are in fact the true friends of the multinationals. For it is often the multinationals with their armies of lawyers and lobbyists who call for or shape the regulatory barriers which keep smaller businesses confined to their local markets. So the ECR... So, thank you. So the ECR group will vote for CETA as an opportunity to show the world that the EU is open for business, an opportunity for small businesses to create more jobs, and an opportunity for everyone, not just the privileged few or the large multinationals, to benefit from open trade. We support CETA. Per il gruppo dell'Alleanza dei Democratici e dei Liberali, la parola onorevole Schacke. Dank u wel, voorzitter. Dank u wel, commissaris en collega's. Ons debat vandaag concludeert zeven jaar hard werken en onderhandelen voor een resultaat waar we trots op mogen zijn. We hebben banen en groei nodig en CETA levert kansen voor Europese bedrijven door markttoegang. We wilden garanties dat hoge standaarden milieu, mens en consument beschermen en kregen die. We drongen aan op drastische hervorming van investeringsbeschermingen en zien dat een nieuw model veel beter werkt en Canada dit integraal omarmde. En we realiseerden een einde aan bureaucratische romslomp voor kleine, maar ook grote bedrijven. We hebben ingezoomd op elk detail om de vele vragen, verzoeken, zorgen en wensen van maatschappelijke organisaties, van bedrijven, experts en burgers recht te doen. Maar laten we ook uitzoomen en de context waarin we vandaag stemmen helder voor ogen houden. Met president Trump in het Witte Huis wordt een duidelijke Amerikaanse koerswijziging ingezet. Een leiderschap voor open economieën, open samenlevingen en een sterk multilateraal systeem moet nu vanuit ons in Europa komen. Te veel grote machten zouden liever zien dat globalisering en handel kan zonder eerlijke standaarden of eerlijke concurrentie of respect voor mens en milieu. Maar juist nu moeten wij dit moment aangrijpen om door te werken aan een ambitieuze handelsagenda diep geworteld in de waarden die we allemaal koesteren. We kunnen ons geen betere partner voorstellen dan de Canadezen, het meest Europese land buiten de Unie, zeker onder leiding van premier Trudeau. Terwijl wij Canada bezochten met de Internationale Handelscommissie, werd Brussel getroffen door de walgelijke terroristische aanslagen. En ik zal de massale steun van de Canadezen nooit vergeten. Hele ijshockeystadions vol. En dit bevestigt slechts dat onze bondgenootschap niet alleen diep in de geschiedenis verankerd is, maar vandaag nog zeer persoonlijk ervaren wordt en zeker toekomstbestendig is. En laat ik tot slot benadrukken hoezeer CETA een liberaal succes is. Maar iedereen die zijn of haar nek uitstak en aan dit verdrag werkte, vaak tegen de stroom in daarvoor bedanken. Commissaris Malmström vanuit de commissie, maar ook alle Canadezen voor het geduld wat ze hebben moeten opbrengen in deze zeven jaar aan hard werken. Maar het resultaat mag er zijn. Dank u wel. Per il gruppo confederale della sinistra unitaria europea, sinistra verde nordica, la parola all'onorevole Mineur. Voorzitter, dit zijn een paar handtekeningen van de 3,5 miljoen mensen die zich verzetten tegen CETA. En dit is maar een deel van de miljoenen mensen die hebben gedemonstreerd tegen CETA. Dan heb ik het nog niet over de 150.000 mensen die bezwaar hebben gemaakt tegen elke vorm van arbitrage. 
en de ruim 2000 gemeenten en regio's die zich CETA en TTIP vrij hebben verklaard. Niemand heeft ook maar één onvriendelijk woord gericht tegen Canada. Maar met vrienden maak je niet zo'n slecht verdrag, gebaseerd op wantrouwen en ten koste van heel veel mensen. Ik maak me oprecht grote zorgen over dit verdrag. Het is een verdrag dat ervan uitgaat dat elke regel die de handel beperkt een verkeerde regel is die geschrapt moet worden. En daardoor staan de regels voor voedselveiligheid onder druk. Onze volksgezondheid wordt bedreigd. Milieubescherming staat op de helling. En ook onze autonomie op het gebied van regelgeving staat onder druk. We leveren ons uit aan multinationals. Daarmee verzwakken we niet alleen onze rechtsstaat, we zetten ook onze democratie op het spel. Dat is niet alleen mijn mening, het is ook wat we hebben gehoord van rechters, juristen en advocaten. Van vakbonden, consumentenorganisaties en belangenvereniging voor het midden- en kleinbedrijf. Van boeren, natuurbeschermers en milieuorganisaties. Van NGO's die onderzoek hebben gedaan naar geldstromen, naar transparantie en ontwikkelingssamenwerking. CETA is een bedreiging voor ons allemaal. En ik begrijp de liberalen niet dat ze de democratie en de rechtsstaat laten ondergraven. Ik snap de EPP niet dat ze de boeren laten verkommeren en het midden- en kleinbedrijf. En ik snap al helemaal de sociaaldemocraten niet die niet opstaan tegen dit soort verdragen die geen enkele garantie biedt op succes, die veel risico's opleveren en waar bovendien nog tientallen open vragen bij zijn. CETA is een slecht verdrag. Het is alleen maar goed voor multinationals. En daar zijn wij niet door verkozen. Wij zijn verkozen door de miljoenen mensen die ons vragen hun belangen te verdedigen. People before profit. Stop CETA. Per il gruppo Verde, Alleanza Libera Europea, ha la parola l'onorevole Jadot. Merci, Monsieur le Président, Madame la Commissaire, chers collègues. Il y aurait donc les gentils Canadiens avec qui nous allons avoir l'accord le plus beau que l'Europe n'a jamais signé. Mieux, grand hasard de l'histoire, nous signons cet accord alors qu'un dirigeant xénophobe, raciste, sexiste, dirige les États-Unis, et je voudrais vous rappeler, M. Weber, que M. Trump est un conservateur élu par les Républicains. Il fait donc partie de votre famille politique à l'échelle internationale. Et puis, il y aurait de l'autre côté, il y aurait de l'autre côté, les salariés et leurs syndicats, les consommateurs et leurs organisations, la société civile et ses millions de personnes qui ont signé des pétitions. Il y aurait les PME et il y aurait ces parlementaires inapte au bonheur que vous leur proposez. Rabougris sur eux-mêmes, repliés sur le vieux monde et l'espace ancien. Mais avez-vous oublié qui a négocié cet accord C'est M. Harper, climato-sceptique, qui aujourd'hui conseille les multinationales. C'est M. Barroso, ancien président de la Commission européenne, qui aujourd'hui conseille Goldman Sachs. C'est M. De Gurt, ancien commissaire au commerce, qui aujourd'hui conseille les multinationales. Et l'aboutissement de ce processus de dérégulation, l'aboutissement de ce processus de privatisation de la norme, c'est justement le gouvernement de M. Trump, où ce ne sont pas les commissaires et les anciens premiers ministres qui passent vers les multinationales, ce sont les multinationales qui sont au gouvernement Trump. Nous sommes dans un moment trop précieux, trop rare de notre histoire, pour ne pas regarder qu'est-ce qui justifie, qu'est-ce qui explique les Brexit, qu'est-ce qui explique les Trump. Et c'est la mondialisation que vous construisez qui explique en partie ça. Vous alimentez le feu dont se nourrissent les extrêmes droites pour dire à quel point la globalisation, l'autre, la différence, c'est toujours mal. Il faut absolument construire, Madame la Commissaire, une globalisation de la régulation si nous ne voulons pas que l'Europe continue à se disloquer, si nous ne voulons pas des Brexit, si nous ne voulons pas plus de Trump, plus d'extrême droite, il nous faut faire de l'Europe le pilier de la régulation publique de la mondialisation. Ça veut dire des droits humains, 
des droits sociaux et l'environnement au-dessus des droits commerciaux et de l'investissement. Et le TAFTA, le CETA, c'est exactement l'inverse. Vous nous dites que vous protégez les emplois vous-même dans l'audition entre la Commission du commerce international et la Commission de l'emploi. Vous avez dit « on ne sait pas si ça va créer de l'emploi ». Quand la seule étude qui existe, c'est moins de 100 000 emplois en Europe. Vous prétendez défendre le climat avec M. Trudeau. M. Trudeau, il y a deux jours, il était avec Donald Trump pour remettre en service le projet de pipeline Keston XL que Barack Obama avait supprimé parce qu'il considérait qu'il était climaticide. C'est votre commission, madame, qui refuse de légiférer et de réglementer les perturbateurs endocriniens pour protéger la santé. Alors oui, nous voulons un partenariat avec les Canadiens, avec les Américains, avec tous les autres, mais sur le climat, sur les droits sociaux, sur la lutte contre les paradis fiscaux, sur la supervision bancaire. Et de tout ça, il n'y a rien dans ces accords. Rien dans ces accords. Défendons la démocratie, défendons la souveraineté démocratique, défendons la souveraineté juridique européenne, défendons un grand projet de l'Europe pour contrer une mondialisation de dérégulation, une mondialisation qui concentre les pouvoirs dans les mains de quelques multinationales et de quelques multimilliardaires. Faisons autre chose de l'Europe, sinon elle se disloquera, c'est ce à quoi vous contribuez aujourd'hui. Per il gruppo Europa della libertà e della democrazia diretta, la parola onorevole Beghin. Grazie Presidente. Signora Commissaria, colleghi, il CETA non è un trattato di libero scambio. È una riforma istituzionale occulta, concepita in stanze segrete da tecnocrati non eletti e camuffata da trattato internazionale. Da tre anni il Movimento 5 Stelle prova a mettervi in guardia, ma non è servito a nulla. Non è servito dirvi che il CETA porterà una crescita irrisoria dello 0,01% l'anno, che farà perdere il lavoro a 200.000 europei, che porterà a una contrazione dei salari reali tra i 300 e i 1.300 euro. Non è valso a nulla ricordarvi che le importazioni di grano, carne o mais cresceranno vertiginosamente di 3, 4, 7 volte, o che un'azienda agricola canadese è 20 volte più grande di un'europea, con buona pace dei nostri piccoli agricoltori. Signora Commissaria, dopo il voto di oggi il CETA entrerà nella vita dei nostri cittadini. Gli europei se lo troveranno a tavola. Una colossale fregatura, visto che in Canada l'81% del mais, l'80% del grano sono GM. La carne contiene ractopamina e altre sostanze attualmente vietate in Europa, ma che in futuro sarà facilissimo rendere legali grazie al CETA. E se ufficialmente il CETA promette di non far entrare gli OGM, in realtà passeranno tutti dalla porta sul retro, perché il trattato incorpora lo stesso grimaldello già usato con successo dalle corporation americane per attaccare il blocco europeo alla carne con gli ormoni, cioè le pericolosissime norme sanitarie dell'Organizzazione Mondiale del Commercio. In più, acqua, sanità e i servizi che oggi sono pubblici saranno sottoposti a un'andata di privatizzazioni e liberalizzazioni irreversibili. E nessuno potrà opporsi, perché il CETA istituirà un tribunale sovranazionale col potere di condannare gli Stati che oseranno mettere i bastoni fra le ruote delle corporation e dei loro profitti. Una vergognosa giustizia privata a cui avranno accesso anche tre quarti delle imprese americane che operano in Europa, triangolando le azioni legali tramite le loro filiali in Canada. Ma soprattutto il CETA è un assegno in bianco. Colleghi, forse credete di sapere cosa state per firmare, ma non è così. Il CETA crea un organismo tecnocratico e non eletto che potrà interpretare a piacimento i protocolli del trattato. E non si tratta di poche pagine, ma del 75% delle 1.500 pagine che lo compongono, alcune delle quali sono state lasciate volutamente in bianco. Tutto questo senza nessun, ripeto, nessun controllo democratico. Per questo, colleghi, ve lo dico un'altra volta, il CETA non è un trattato, non è un accordo. È un colpo di Stato silenzioso, è una riforma istituzionale travestita da trattato e noi dobbiamo fermarlo. Grazie. Per il gruppo Europa delle Nazioni e della Libertà la parola all'onorevole Marine Le Pen. Mesdames et Messieurs les députés, après sept ans de négociations, ce traité entre l'Union européenne et le Canada, frère jumeau du traité transatlantique, va être refusé ou accepté par ce Parlement. 
Le traité CETA a été soigneusement caché à tous les citoyens. Il n'a presque jamais été discuté devant les grandes instances de débat que sont les médias, car aucun de vous ne veut et ne peut le défendre publiquement. Ah, votez caché dans l'ombre, vous aimez bien ça, mais débattre en pleine lumière, vous détestez. Pire les députés du Parti Socialiste, qui sont souvent d'une grande indulgence sur le CETA devant ce Parlement, font semblant de s'y opposer dans quelques médias confidentiels. Les UMP français ont tous voté pour le CETA en commission, mais s'y disent opposés lorsqu'on les questionne. Quand les peuples comprendront tous ces mensonges, ils ne vous feront plus jamais confiance. Voilà pourquoi ce traité est un traité scélérat vis-à-vis -vis des peuples européens. Il supprime la quasi-totalité des droits de douane sur les produits échangés entre l'Union Européenne et le Canada et détruira une fois de plus des centaines de milliers d'emplois en Europe, des dizaines de milliers en France. L'agriculture, l'élevage, déjà laminés par tous les traités de libre-échange que vous avez déjà signés, continueront leur descente aux enfers. Nos éleveurs mis en concurrence avec des éleveurs canadiens, 35% moins chers, risquent de fermer le rideau en masse. Je vous le demande solennellement. N'avez-vous pas honte de détruire ainsi ceux qui vous nourrissent. Pour aplanir le terrain de jeu des multinationales, vous bradez notre droit à réglementer, aligner les normes avec celles du Canada, interdisant ainsi à nos citoyens la protection qu'ils attendent de leurs représentants politiques. Malheureusement pour eux, les profits des multinationales vous intéressent plus que la protection des citoyens et de l'environnement. Les différents comités que vous mettez en place, ces mécanismes de coopération réglementaire obscurs, sont de nature supranationale, ne seront contrôlés par personne, tant et si bien que de grands juristes français se posent la question de leur constitutionnalité. Pour parachever le tout, vous créez une justice privée d'exception pour permettre aux multinationales d'attaquer les États afin que plus aucune réglementation ne déplaise à ces nouveaux seigneurs des temps modernes. Ceux qui rendront justice dans ce tribunal ne seront pas des juges, fonctionnaires publics neutres, ce seront le plus souvent des avocats d'affaires en droit international en conflit d'intérêts, car ayant touché des honoraires de ces mêmes multinationales ou de leurs consoeurs. Enfin, les services publics si importants pour les classes moyennes et populaires devront fonctionner dans une logique purement marchande, à l'exception de quelques services régaliens. Voilà le tableau désastreux du traité CETA. Si ce traité est voté dans quelques heures, cela démontrerait une fois de plus à tous les Européens votre incapacité à les défendre, et l'importance cruciale pour chaque peuple de retrouver sa souveraineté, sa capacité à décider librement de son avenir. La seule chose rassurante est que le peuple français aura une possibilité pour revenir sur ce traité et tous les autres traités scélérats, l'élection présidentielle de mai 2017. Tant il est vrai, tant il est vrai que c'est aux nations de négocier leur politique commerciale et non à une structure non élue qui ne représente que ses propres intérêts et non ceux des peuples. La parole à l'honorable Papadakis non iscritto. Η ΣΕΤΑ υπηρετεί τα συμφέροντα των μονοπωλίων και συνιστά ένα σχέδιο ενιαίας αγοράς για την παραπέρα αύξηση των καπιταλιστικών κερδών με σημαντικές γεωπολιτικές προεκτάσεις. Οι μεγάλοι επιχειρηματικοί όμιλοι Ευρωπαϊκής Ένωσης και Καναδά επιδιώκουν να αποκτήσουν προβάδισμα κερδοφορίας σε βάρος των ανταγωνιστών τους. Σημαντικό ρόλο σε αυτούς τους ανταγωνισμούς παίζουν ιδιαίτερα όμιλοι των ΗΠΑ με την ισχυρή θέση που έχουν στον Καναδά. Η ΣΕΤΑ ανοίγει το δρόμο για την αφισβήτηση και κατάργηση όποιων εργατικών δικαιωμάτων έχουν απομείνει όρθια με μαζικές απολύσεις και στις δύο πλευρές του Ατλαντικού. Στο όνομα της προστασίας των επενδυτών και της επιχειρηματικότητας κατοχυρώνεται η μέγιστη δυνατή ελευθερία κίνησης κεφαλαίων, εμπορευμάτων και υπηρεσιών, συνθλίβοντας μεταξύ άλλων και τους μικρομεσαίους αγροκτοκτηνοτρόφους. Καταργώντας στοιχειώδεις περιβαλλοντικούς κανονισμούς και όποια ακόμα ελάχιστα επίπεδα ασφάλειας στα τρόφιμα προστασίας του περιβάλλοντος προβλέπονταν μέχρι σήμερα. Έρονται και τα τελευταία εμπόδια για τα μονοπόλια, για την απελευθέρωση κρατικών και άλλων υπηρεσιών, σηματοδοτώντας την ανεμπόδεστη παράδοσή τους στο κεφάλαιο. Η καταπαραγγελία σύσταση επενδυτικών δικαστηρίων στοχεύει να εξασφαλίσει εγκυμένα κέρδη για τα μονοπόλια όχι μόνο απευθεία από τι επενδύσει του, αλλά και μέσω αποζημιώσεων. Σοβαρέ είναι οι ευθύνε και μεγάλη κοροϊδία τη κυβέρνηση ΣΥΡΙΖΑ στην Ελλάδα, που ενώ έχει συνυπογράψει τη ΣΕΤΑ στο Ευρωπαϊκό Συμβούλιο, στελέχη του παρι... παριστάνουν του διαμαρτυρόμενου. 
Το Κομμουνιστικό Κόμμα τη Ελλάδα καταψηφίζει την αντιλαϊκή αυτή συμφωνία που δεν παίρνει ούτε από συστάσει ούτε από διορθώσει. Ο αγώνα ενάντια συμφωνίε και τα συμφέροντα του κεφαλαίου είναι μέρο τη πάλη για την εξάλληψη των αιτιών τη καπιταλιστική εκμετάλλευση για την ικανοποίηση των λαϊκών αναγκών. Sehr geehrte Frau Präsidentin, heute ist ein guter Tag für Europa, für Kanada und für die Welt. Wir gestalten nämlich heute die Welt mit. Warum tun wir das? Wir tun das, weil Globalisierung stattfindet. Wir wollen aber nicht, dass in einem inger, immer enger verflochtenen Umfeld der Reichste, der Größte, der Unfairste entscheidet, wo es lang geht, sondern wir wollen, dass in einer zusammenwachsenden Welt die Macht des Rechts gilt. Deshalb ist es ein guter Tag für unsere Bürger, für Europa und die Welt, wenn freiheitliche Demokratien in Kanada und Europa Globalisierung gestalten und Völkerrecht setzen. Wir nehmen aber auch wahr, viele Menschen haben Sorgen. Sie haben Sorgen um ihre Zukunft. Sie haben Sorge vor den immer schnelleren Veränderungen. Sie haben Sorgen wegen der vielen halbwahren und unwahren Behauptungen, die über dieses Handelsabkommen in die Welt gesetzt werden. Deshalb möchte ich noch mal ganz klar sagen, worum es geht und worum es nicht geht. Es geht um Wachstum und Beschäftigung und es geht nicht um niedrigere Umwelt-, Sozial- oder Verbraucherschutzstandards. Es geht um besseren Marktzugang für unsere kleinen und großen Unternehmen und es geht nicht um eine Zwangsprivatisierung der kommunalen Daseinsvorsorge. Es geht um den Schutz unserer Bürgerinnen und Bürger vor Benachteiligung im Ausland und es geht nicht um die Beschränkung politischen Entscheidungsspielraums oder die Entmachtung nationaler Gerichte. Und meine Damen und Herren, deshalb ist unser Ergebnis als EVP, wir sagen Ja zu CETA, weil Abschottung auf allen Seiten nur Verlierer produziert. Wir sagen Ja zu CETA, weil wir die Chancen verwirklichen wollen, die vor uns liegen. Wir sagen Ja zu CETA, weil wir der Globalisierung endlich Regeln geben wollen. Kolleginnen und Kollegen, in diesen unsicheren Zeit Zeiten suchen die Menschen nach Halt und Führung. Es ist Zeit, sie ihnen zu geben und das CETA-Abkommen ist hier ein guter Baustein. Vielen Dank. Thank you. And now for two minutes, Mr. Moisa. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, we have reached the final stage of a lengthy process and difficult process of exercising democratic scrutiny over the negotiation and approval of CETA. The SND group, as many colleagues in this House, have followed closely the negotiation already before what I would call was its first conclusion in September 2014. We have voiced concerns, demanded changes, and we have achieved most of those already on the occasion of what was effectively the second conclusion of the negotiation in February 2016, last year. The most important of these was the removal of the old toxic ISDS from the treaty and its replacement with a public system, the new ICS. In the past year, uh, we have also contributed to and closely scrutinized and debated the new CETA, CETA package, what became the CETA package, submitted to the EP for consent today. We welcome as a group the fact that many of the citizens' concerns have been addressed through the clarifications and commitments from the Commission and the Canadian authorities through the joint interpretative instrument and the other instruments in the package. CETA is not perfect, far from it, but it is an important step in the right direction, a more progressive trade policy where the benefits are widely spread among all citizens. The SND group has tabled its own consensual resolution, which clarifies what we mean by progressive trade agreements by spelling out clearly what we like about CETA and what we don't like about CETA and expect to be further corrected in CETA where agreed or in future trade agreements more widely. Better provisions on sustainable development and a sanctions-based approach, further improvements to the ICS system and full EP involvement in the designation of judges, better forms to, cap to capture the protection of public services improve transparency for all trade agreements in future. The SND group has decided to vote in favor of CETA. This is because most of us believe CETA is good for our economy, particularly for SMEs, and it does not threaten our choices, values, or laws. But it is also an act of trust and an offer of partnership towards the EU institutions, notably the Commission and the Councils, with which we want to work together for a better trade policy, and towards Canada, which is a country that shares our values, our objectives, and our hopes for a better future. 
One and a half minutes now for Mr. Campbell Bannerman. Madam President, today marks a milestone when the European Parliament votes on, and I earnestly hope approves, the most ambitious, modern and largest trade agreement with a developed nation the EU has ever done. As ECR shadow reporter on this CETA agreement, I've worked for years on this, as has others like my colleague Charles Tannock on the Parallel Strategic Partnership Agreement. The CETA trade deal will eliminate 99% of non-agricultural tariffs, saving EU exporters almost 500 million euros a year immediately and deliver near complete market access both ways. This includes the best ever services deal and it will also give European companies access to Canadian procurement markets for the first time. In addition, it contains mutual recognition of uh, professional qualifications for midwives, architects, lawyers, doctors, but there is no free movement and no access fees payable either way. It would make a very good template for Britain. Once fully implemented, the agreement is expected to increase bilateral trade in goods and services between the EU member states and Canada by 23% or £19 billion. It has, however, taken too long, seven years to get to this point. Two years were wasted on EU human rights demands and another two years on investor disputes, with the unacceptable ISDS being replaced by the better investment court system. The EU must reflect on the time it takes to get agreements negotiated if they are going to be taken seriously in future with any major trading partner and if CETA fails, any credibility the EU has in negotiation will be lost, including with Britain. So this is a vital vote from all our perspectives. Thank you. Will you accept a blue card from Mrs. Cadenbach, sir? Thank you. 30 seconds, please, for your question. Herzlichen Dank. Wir haben von Ihnen und auch von Ihren Kollegen von der EPP gehört, dass Sie alle Ihre Überlegungen auf Fakten beruhen. Und ich hätte jetzt einfach nur das Interesse, dass Sie sagen, auf welche Fakten untermauern, dass dieses Abkommen mit Kanada, das ja den Handel in beide Richtungen extrem beschleunigen und verstärken wird, wo hier die Vorteile im Zusammenhang mit dem Kampf gegen den Klimawandel sind, wo wir aus diesem Abkommen ableiten können, dass wir zu den CO2 zwei Emissionsreduktionen in Europa und in Kanada beitragen werden. I think the fact is the same with all free trade agreements. It's better for people on the high street. It actually reduces the cost of food, for example, seafood coming from Canada, meat coming from Canada. That's good for the poorest people in Europe. So that's what these free trade agreements are about. It's good for jobs, our ability to uh, sell services to Canada, to break into provincial government in Canada. It's good for that. And all of this without actually selling out in terms of workers' rights or social protection or environmental protection. So it's a good deal. For heaven's sake, support it. Otherwise, we won't get any other deal done by the EU. Mr. Takula, for one minute, please. Kiitoksia puheenjohtaja. Parlamentti on keskustellut tästä CETA-sopimuksesta jo kuukausia ja voi todeta, että valitettavasti CETA on saanut vähän huonon maineen, kun se on liitetty aina TTIP-sopimukseen ja nähty pelkkänä Trojan hevosena, kun tosiasiassa tämä sopimus on täysin erillinen kokonaisuus. Kanada ei ole sama asia kuin Yhdysvallat, Kanada on Kanada. Tämä on ehkä hyvä muistaa, kun tätä sopimusta käydään läpi. Tämä CETA-sopimus tarjoaa eurooppalaisille PK-yrityksille mahdollisuuden löytää Kanadasta uusia markkinoita ja helpottaa palvelujen kauppaa monilla aloilla. Tällä hetkellä Euroopan unioni tarvitsee edistyksellistä kauppasopimusta, Euroopan unioni tarvitsee globaaleja markkinoita. Me tarvitsemme Kanadan kaltaisia samanmielisiä, samat armot omavia kumppaneita. CETAssa nämä asiat yhdistyvät ja toivon syvästi, että kollegoilta löytyy vielä perinteistä EU-henkistä kauppapolitiikkaa, sitä ajattelua, että me emme ole kallistumassa väärällä tavalla vihervasemmiston mukana trumppilaisen ajatteluun, vaan me haluamme kehittää, luoda kaupalle sääntöjä maailmanlaajuisesti ja olla edellä kulkijana maailman kaupan järjestystä luodessa. 
Thank you. There is a blue card request from Mr. Jurek. Will you accept the blue card? A blue card request, sir? Yes. 30 seconds for the question. Thank you. So, uh, CETA jest według Pana dobre dla małych i średnich przedsiębiorstw, CETA jest dobre dla eksporterów europejskich. No, nie wiem, czy Pana zdaniem CETA jest złe dla międzynarodowych koncernów. A może warto otwarcie powiedzieć, że to, to tak naprawdę o ich interesy chodzi, a nie przedsiębiorców w Europie, nie naszych rolników, nie Europejczyków. I did not get the entire English translation, and I, I gather colleagues had a problem. Was there a problem with the English booth? And could we have a translation of the question, please? Could I get some guidance from the booth as to whether they heard the question, or do I need to repeat it? Could you repeat it, perhaps, with brevity? Sir, yes. Please, Mr. Jurek. Please. Thank you. Mówił Pan o małych i średnich przedsiębiorstwach, które Pana zdaniem mają skorzystać na umowie CETA o zaletach dla eksportu europejskiego. Dlaczego nie mówił Pan o międzynarodowych koncernach, głównym beneficjencie tego układu? Czy Pana zdaniem międzynarodowe koncerny na tym stracą, te ulokowane w Kanadzie? Arvoisa puhemies, kiitos tästä kysymyksestä ja toteaisin, että kun aika on yksi minuutti, niin kaikkia asioita ei voi tuoda siinä, siinä esille. Mutta toteaisin näin, että suuryritykset, monikansalliset yritykset pärjäävät jo tällä hetkellä. Heillä on omat globaalit verkostonsa, mutta pienet ja keskisuuret yritykset, ne tarvitsevat päästä myöskin paremmin markkinoille viemään omia tuotteita. Ja tämä on tällä hetkellä iso ongelma. Heillä ei ole sellaisia varoja tai juristiarmeja, että he pääsevät noille, noille markkinoille. Toisaalta, niin kuin totesin, työllisyyden kannalta tätä tarvitaan. Meidän on hyvä, tuleeko jälleen aikareja tässä vastaan. Ehkä vaan totean sen, että hyvä muistaa se, että vapakauppa luo työpaikkoja, automatisaatio, robotit, tekoäly vie niitä. Me tarvitaan tervettä vapakauppaa ja nimenomaan PK-yrityksiin se paino, painopiste. And now Mr. Schulz for one minute, please. Frau Präsidentin, Frau Kommissarin, liebe Kolleginnen und Kollegen, viel gäbe es zu sagen und ich hätte gerne meine Rede einfach beiseite gelegt, um auf die Argumente, die hier ausgetauscht wurden, einzugehen. Aber lassen Sie mich bekräftigen, das Abkommen enthält noch immer, obwohl Sie, Frau Kommissarin, versucht haben, die großen Defizite der Ära de Gucht wegzuverhandeln bzw. die gröbsten Unsicherheitslücken zu schließen, gravierende Mängel. Die Logik von Sonderrechten für ausländische Investoren bleibt trotz Reformen ihrerseits am ISDS-System bestehen. Der Negativlisteneinschluss, erstmalig für ein EU-Freihandelsabkommen, öffnet weiteren Liberalisierungen den Weg in allen Wirtschaftsbereichen, auch für die kleinen und mittelständischen Unternehmen. Die ausgefeilten Klauseln zur Regulierungszusammenarbeit lassen das vereiterte Right to Regulate auf sehr dünnem Eis dastehen, gerade weil CETA als sogenanntes lebendes Abkommen vereinbart ist. Wir leben also noch immer auf einer Baustelle, trotz sieben Jahren Verhandlungen und 1600 Seiten Text. Da CETA aber mehr ist als ein Handelsabkommen, sondern auch wesentlich mit beeinflussen wird, wie wir künftig auch in Bezug auf Klimawandel und notwendige Veränderungen unserer Wirtschaftsweise Industrie 4.0 eingeschlossen produzieren, kann ich nur sagen, es ist nicht zustimmungsfähig. Danke. Two minutes, Madam Keller. Thank you. Thank you. And I would also like to thank the millions of people all over Europe and in Canada who have been mobilizing around this agreement. You have achieved at least reforms, even though we think they're by far not enough, and you have ensured a European-wide debate on trade. This is a big achievement, and without you, we would have never gotten that far. The Commission and many colleagues say that CETA is a new style agreement, but beware, it is not. It's an agreement of the very old sort. It's an agreement for putting investor rights over people's interests of liberalization without end, of harming climate, environment, and also social standards. And on transparency, it's even worse than TTIP. And to all who think that Canada is a beacon of liberalism, 
Well, CETA, as it was mentioned, was not negotiated by Prime Minister Trudeau. It was done by his predecessor. It was done by your predecessor, Mr. De Gucht and Barroso. And if I were a Social Democrat, I would get pretty nervous around that. But anyway, if the idea is that we like CETA because Canada is nice, then we should all be aware that the Commission is negotiating on many fronts with many countries. So who are our colleagues then willing to reject because they're less nice? I think we need cooperation with countries, especially with nice countries like Canada, and we need trade, and not just for the maple syrup. But we need to do it differently. Trade needs to be good for workers and employees, for consumers, for small-scale enterprises, for the society as a whole, and not just for the super big companies. And agreements need to set good standards. And especially in these times, we need to work together for climate change, because this is our last chance also to uphold international law because it's being challenged. All this we need, and all this is not in CETA. And therefore, the Greens EFA group is rejecting CETA. But no matter how the vote will go today, this is only just the beginning of a struggle for fair trade and good cooperation, and we're ready for it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jadowski has a blue card question. Mrs. Keller, will you take a blue card? Mr. Jadowski. Okay. Dobrý den, paní Ska Keller, vy velmi často kritizujete všechny obchodní dohody a my jsme si na tu vaši retoriku zvykli, ale uvádíte celkem takové, bych řekl, falešné argumenty. Třeba ve své řeči jste řekli, že CETA je zájmem investorů a ne zájmem lidí. Mohl bych se vás zeptat, investoři nejsou lidé, nejsou to obyčejní lidé, kteří, kteří chtějí, chtějí taky žít, Nejsou to jejich daně, ze kterých vy jste tady v této, v této instituci placena? Děkuji. Thank you. Thank you for that question because indeed I do believe investors are very normal people. They need to have rights like everybody, like all of us, like everyone in Europe and in Canada and elsewhere. And that is why investors should have exactly the same right as people and also be able to claim those rights in front of courts, courts that we can all go to, but not special courts where only investors can go to, because investors have rights, but they should have not have more rights than us normal people, the people in Europe and in Canada and elsewhere. Thank you. Thank you. Before I give the floor to our next speaker, could I just say that there were two requests for blue cards. I will take one and I may indeed have to uh, drop the blue cards if our time uh, is running out. So just to bear that in mind, I now give the floor to the Earl of Dartmouth for two and a half minutes. Uh, thank you, Madam President. First, I'm going to begin by quoting from an earlier speech I made on TTIP. Trade should be about economic benefits not political goals, and yet the Commission consistently exploits trade agreements in order to advance its own political agenda. And I refer you to Commissioner Malmström, who is here for once, at the confirmation hearings. There the Commissioner stated in prepared remarks that trade is a powerful foreign policy tool, it must support Europe's wider international goals. The intention is clear. Member states are being forced to barter, and if you can forgive the pun, trade away their sovereignty in order to support the EU's foreign policy. This is sheer vanity. The EU should not manipulate the trade of the member states in order to promote the foreign policy pretensions of a wannabe European superstate. Thank you. Now to the detail, and this is a specific detail. In CETA there is no clause, none, that confers freedom of movement on the citizens of Canada, nor freedom of movement into Canada for citizens of the EU member states. It is a fact the European Union has well over 100 trade agreements if you include GSP and GSP+. Plus. And of these, it is only the EFTA countries, of which there are four, whose specific form of trade agreement with the EU has a clause that confers freedom of movement. 
Nevertheless, it is endlessly asserted that any access at all to the EU single market requires freedom of movement. The facts are clear. This is wrong. This is completely untrue. This is erroneous. This is total tosh. And it is a tragedy for the integrity and credibility of our politics that many of those who stand in the way of Brexit putting foot, persist in putting forward this false fact. That is fake news. That, Labour MP, MEPs particularly, and they know who they are, that is the big lie. Your neighbour, Mrs Atkinson, has a question for you. Will you accept? 30 seconds, please. My friend, William, do you not agree with me that the whole basis of, of um, a negotiating a trade agreement would be that you actually put somebody in charge that knows what they're doing? Why have we got a former socialist sociology lecturer from Sweden negotiating on behalf of the UK, which will bind us after Brexit? She's not qualified to do the job. Uh, if I may say so, I would point out that at the hearings that three political groups voted against the confirmation of the present EU Trade Commissioner. And if only, if only the ECR had joined us, she probably wouldn't have happened. As it is, we have somebody who is completely unqualified, and that is the person who the 27 other member states are unfortunately stuck with. Colleagues. Let me just say the Commissioner was approved by Parliament and that is why she is in this position and I would ask you, uh, there's no need to wave, I can see you, I can see you sir, sir if you, could you just listen, could you just listen, please sit down, please sit down. I have, I have made the announcement, colleagues, and I think we can defend the Commissioner's right to be here. And we will now continue with our speaker's list for one and a half minutes. Mr. Salvini, please. Grazie, colleghi. Non parlo agli inutili esponenti della Commissione europea che sono sordi, parlo ai cittadini italiani ed europei che ci stanno seguendo fuori da questo palazzo. Oggi siete complici dell'ennesimo regalo alle multinazionali e alla finanza. Ci rimetteranno il posto di lavoro in Europa circa 200.000 lavoratori, operai, agricoltori, piccoli imprenditori. Oggi voi scegliete di portare sulle tavole dei nostri figli la carne agli ormoni e il grano OGM, magari trattato con pesticidi vietati in Europa. Dopo il riso dalla Birmania, l'olio della Tunisia, i pomodori e le arance del Marocco, voi, nel nome del vantaggio di pochi, riempite le tavole delle schifezze di altrettanto pochi. Oltretutto, permettendo l'arrivo in Europa di tutto il finto Made in Italy, il finto prosciutto di Parma, il finto parmigiano reggiano, la finta mozzarella. Datele ai vostri figli quelle schifezze. Noi vorremmo che ciascuno potesse mangiare quello che la terra, il mare e il buon Dio ci hanno dato. 40.000 posti di lavoro in Italia, 40.000 posti di lavoro in Francia, a rimetterci saranno sempre i soliti, a guadagnarci sarete voi. Però io vi dico che la Brexit, Trump, le elezioni in Olanda, in Francia, in Germania, in Italia e in Austria stanno dimostrando che i popoli si stanno svegliando. Quindi fate in fretta a fare gli ultimi regali ai vostri amichetti perché i popoli stanno arrivando a prendervi. Preparatevi a fare le valigie per andare o in Canada o in Cina che vi aspettano a braccia aperte. Mrs. Woutmann would like to ask you a question. Will you accept? Blue card question? Yes. I will, I will speak in Flemish, so maybe you can... You don't? You don't accept the blue card. Perfect. We will move on, oh. madam. Thank you for your try. We move on to our next speaker for one mo minute, please. Mr. Corvin Mika, thank you. Graham, moment. Argumenty zwolenników CETA są demagogiczne, kłamliwe i fałszywe. Argumenty przeciwników CETA 
są demagogiczne, kłamliwe i fałszywe. Arystoteles mówił, że demokracja to rządy osłów prowadzonych przez hieny. Poziom dyskusji w tym parlamencie pokazuje, że jest znacznie gorzej. Ponieważ diabeł tkwi w szczegółach, wyrażam tylko zaniepokojenie, że traktat ten otacza mgła niejasności. Dotyczy to zwłaszcza najważniejszego punktu traktatu, mianowicie arbitrażu. Zgadzam się, że prywatny arbitraż jest lepszy od sądów państwowych podatnych na korupcję i naciski polityczne. Zwłaszcza dziwię się polskim posłom, którzy na polskich sądach nie, nie stawiają suchej nitki. Jednak byłby spokojniejszy, gdyby traktat stanowił, że superarbitrzy muszą pochodzić ze Szwajcarii, Japonii lub innych krajów, w których jeszcze dominuje uczciwość. A poza tym sądzę, że Unia Europejska musi być zniszczona. Dziękuję za uwagę. Thank you. Again, just before I give the floor to the next speaker, we are very tight on time, colleagues, and the vote is long, and it must begin at 12 o'clock, so I will not take any more blue cards to give uh, colleagues who have indicated at the end of the debate uh, an opportunity to speak. So for one minute now, I give the floor to Mr. Valesa. Thank you, Madam President. The world is watching, ladies and gentlemen. Make no mistake, uh, we're going to do a lot more today than just agree on uh, CETA. Today, for one, we're going to prove our credibility. With the conclusion of these uh, negotiations, we're going to prove that uh, during the difficult geopolitical times when the populism uh, triumphs, we can set and support good international trade practices. With this agreement, we're going to show that we're going to set certain rules that can be established for future agreements on trade around the world. We, if we can agree with Canada, if we can push forward to improve the trade relations with Canada, if we can show the positive impact on the citizens, but also on the industry, on the employment, this uh, agreement will show that this is the way to go. And I believe that that's why we should support it, because it's just one step towards reshaping the world in a positive manner. Thank you. And now for one and a half minutes, Madam Valenciano. Gracias, Presidenta. Debemos darle un poco de perspectiva a este debate y, por cierto, respeto para las posiciones divergentes, menos arrogancia por parte de algunos de los portavoces. Lo cierto es que Europa está en una encrucijada, en un momento muy crítico y tiene un desafío proteccionista y hostil por primera vez por parte de la administración Trump, tenemos un desafío territorial y político por parte de Rusia, un auge imparable de China y su modelo, una vecindad sumida en la, en la inestabilidad y un nacional populismo rampante en las propias instituciones europeas. ¿Qué le queda a Europa sino consolidar o tratar de consolidar un bloque de valores comunes? ¿Y qué país puede hacerlo mejor con Europa que Canadá? No tenemos tantos compañeros de viaje que compartan nuestros valores en el mundo actual. Yo no creo que este acuerdo sea la panacea de nada, ni sea el mejor acuerdo posible. Es el que hoy hemos conseguido. Por cierto, con muchas modificaciones que hemos introducido también los socialistas. Es un paso más en una dirección que yo creo que es la adecuada, aunque no es ni mucho menos nuestra meta. Los socialistas no queremos una globalización sin control. Ni tampoco queremos levantar muros proteccionistas. Frente a ambos extremos, queremos un mundo abierto a los intercambios, pero con reglas democráticas, con control público. Queremos que el comercio sea libre, sí, pero justo. One minute, Mr. Zaharadil. Pani předsedající, já tady reprezentuji Českou republiku, to je malá exportně orientovaná země. Náš obchod s Kanadou dosahuje objemu miliard korun a 60% našich exportérů jsou malé a střední podniky, nejsou to žádné velké korporace. Vyvážíme tam strojírenské výrobky, elektrotechnické výrobky, výrobky z plastu, z gumy, motorové součásti, výrobky optiky, 
výrobky lékařské, lékařská zařízení a také potravinářské výrobky. To všechno se samozřejmě usnadní obchod s těmito komoditami, pokud smlouva CETA vstoupí v platnost, protože všechny přirážky, tarify, cla klesnou postupně na nulu. Je tedy celkem jasné, že já tady budu lobovat za tuto smlouvu, protože je v zájmu mojí země, její ekonomiky, našich zaměstnanců a zaměstnavatelů, aby ta smlouva vstoupila v platnost. A myslím, že pro jednou má zase Evropský parlament dobrou příležitost udělat něco pozitivního, schválit tuto smlouvu. Já se za to velmi přimlouvám. Děkuji. One minute, Mrs. Sharon Zova. Thank you, Madam Chair. First of all, I would like to thank Madam Commissioner for not giving up, for being determined, and for all your efforts invested in the successful conclusion of this agreement. It is also thanks to you that we can make today this important step and give our clear yes to the economic and trade agreement between the EU and Canada, the most comprehensive agreement concluded so far. It will create new business opportunities for the EU businesses, especially SMEs. Not only that, it will facilitate access to public tenders on federal, provincial and local level in Canada. It will take care of European geographical indication, including the Czech beer. Madam Commissioner, the EU needs to show now more than never that it has not resigned, unlike some others, on the liberalization of trade on international level. But not only that, the EU should stand ready to shape it. Instead of closing our borders with protectionism, we have to lead by example and make sure that there can be more, uh, more, more such agreements with our key trade partners. Thank you. One minute, Mrs. Sanchez. Gracias. Señorías, un clamor popular rodea hoy el Parlamento, pero la sordera de muchos de ustedes llevará a los europeos a creer menos aún en esta institución, dando alas a quienes rompen Europa, a quienes quieren levantar muros y a quienes quieren resucitar los fascismos otra vez. Hoy la Casa de la Democracia vende la democracia a las multinacionales. Están ustedes ciegos ante nuestros jefes, la ciudadanía. Son más de tres millones de firmas, más de dos mil municipios y regiones, sindicatos, jueces, ONGs, consumidores, agricultores, ganaderos, trabajadores públicos, ecologistas y pequeños empresarios los que dicen no al Z. ¿Es que no los oyen? ¿A quiénes escuchan ustedes? Y me dedico ahora a mis compañeros socialistas, a mis compañeros del Grupo Socialista y especialmente a, los del, a mis compatriotas del PSOE, cuyo propio sindicato, la UGT, les está pidiendo que voten en contra. ¿Se dan ustedes cuenta de la enorme traición que cometen ustedes a las trabajadoras? ¿Con quién está hoy su lealtad? ¿Están acaso buscando un sitio en un consejo de administración? Hoy es un día triste, pero la democracia se abrirá paso en los estados. Seguimos en pie, voz en alto, diciendo no a la constitución de las multinacionales. No al Z. Mr. Buchner, un minuto, por favor. Meine Damen und Herren, was sich in den letzten Jahren mit CETA abgespielt hat, ist einer Demokratie unwürdig. Die Verhandlungen waren geheim. Nicht einmal wir als gewählte Abgeordnete durften die Unterlagen einsehen. Aber die Lobbyisten der Konzerne spielten kräftig mit. CETA ist gespickt mit Paragraphen, die nichts mit Handel zu tun haben, sondern mit Demokratieabbau und mit Einschränkungen des Arbeitsrechts. CETA verlangt Schiedsgerichtsverfahren, die uns Steuerzahlen Milliarden aus der Tasche ziehen. Natürlich wollen die Konzerne auch an das Geld, das wir in den Gemeinden für die Daseinsvorsorge, für Schulen, Abfallwirtschaft, Stromversorgung ausgeben. CETA baut unser Sozialwesen weiter ab. CETA gibt also dem großen Geld immer mehr Macht über uns. Hören Sie endlich auf, gegen die Bürger zu arbeiten. Lehnen Sie CETA ab. Es zählt Mensch vor Profit. Mr. Mach, one minute, please. Kolegové, ja podporuju tuto dohodu CETA o zóne volného obchodu mezi Evropskou unii a Kanadou. Dohoda hlavne odstraňuje cla a překážky ve vzájemném obchodě, 
A podle mě je skvělé, že Evropská unie bude mít méně peněz z cel a že tyto peníze zůstanou v kapsách lidí. Naši občané budou moci nakupovat kanadské zboží a kanaďané zboží z EU levněji, tedy bez cel. Zvýší se tak o kousíček svoboda a životní úroveň lidí. Je to mnohem lepší dohoda, než ta nechválně známá dohoda TTIP, zejména pokud jde o arbitráže. Jsem pro volný mezinárodní obchod a upřímně předpokládám, že nezávislá Velká Británie si sjedná velmi podobnou dohodu s Kanadou. A kdyby má země Česká republika byla nezávislým státem, tak bych podporoval, aby měla podobnou smlouvu s Kanadou také. Třeba bychom dokázali sjednat ještě stručnější a lepší dohodu, ale princip mezinárodního volného obchodu podporuju. One minute, Mr. De Graaf. Voorzitter, ik condoleer de bevolking van Canada en de EU-lidstaten met deze overeenkomst. CETA is een volgende stap naar dictatuur en armoede. Dictatuur omdat de multinationale ondernemingen het voor het zeggen krijgen. Elke EU-richtlijn en elke nationale wet die de economie raakt, kan voortaan worden opgevat als het opwerpen van een handelsbarrière. En armoede omdat de multinationale ondernemingen hun producten laten maken in de goedkoopste landen. Goedkoop qua lonen en goedkoop qua eisen ten aanzien van milieu- en arbeidsomstandigheden. Het voordeel van lage prijzen voor de burger wordt er niet gedaan door het verdwijnen van banen en lagere lonen. Maar er is hoop. Steeds meer burgers in de EU doorzien de leugens van de gevestigde orde en sluiten zich aan bij de patriotten. Wij vertegenwoordigen het volk. Wij strijden voor hun vrijheid. Het einde van de EU nadert en CETA zal haar ondergang niet keren. One minute, Mr. Fontoulis. Πιστή στι επιταγέ του διεθνού μεγάλου κεφαλαίου, των πολυεθνικών και στο ιδεολόγημα τη παγκοσμιοποίηση, θα ψηφίσετε σήμερα μια κατάπτυστη εμπορική συμφωνία. Επειδή μάλιστα γνωρίζει η Επιτροπή πω η συμφωνία δεν θα υπερψηφιστεί σε όλα τα εθνικά κοινοβούλια, προσπαθεί να την επιβάλλει μέσω του δούριου ύπου τη προσωρινή εφαρμογή. Δεν σα ενδιαφέρει καθόλου το γεγονό πω με αυτόν τον τρόπο θα δώσετε ένα ακόμη πλήγμα στι μικρέ επιχειρήσει. Δεν σα ενδιαφέρει που βιοπαλαιστέ δεν θα καταφέρουν να αντέξουν την επίθεση των πολυεθνικών. Άλλωστε, αυτοί δεν έχουν λομπίστε και τεράστια ποσά για δωρεέ και χρηματοδοτήσει, ώστε να επηρεάζουν τι αποφάσει. Δεν έχουν μέσα μαζική ενημέρωση να προπαγανδίζουν συνεχώ. Έχουν μόνο την ψήφο του, όσο και αν σα ενοχλεί αυτό, και θα θέλατε να μπορούσετε να την καταργήσετε. Η ψήφο των πολιτών είναι που θα καταστήσει τη δική σα ψήφο σήμερα άνευ σημασία. Ευτυχώ σύντομα θα υπάρχουν εθνικέ κυβερνήσει σε πολλά κράτη τη Ευρώπη. Και η ΣΕΤΑ δεν θα είναι παρά ένα κομμάτι χαρτί χωρί καμία ισχύ. Πρέπει μόνο οι πολίτε να κάνουν υπομονή και να προσπαθήσουν να αντέξουν για όσο καιρό θα την εφαρμόσετε. Ευχαριστώ. Madame la présidente, Madame la commissaire, on se moque beaucoup des faits alternatifs que l'administration de M. Trump utilise pour évoquer sa vérité. Ils ont pourtant été inventés depuis longtemps par les ONG, par les collectifs et les extrêmes ici sur le CETA. Vous avez beau présenter les faits de l'accord en y adjoignant des déclarations claires, les arguments n'ont malheureusement plus de place. La délégation française du PPE, elle, a cherché dans les moindres détails les garanties que cet accord qui est bon soit également bien appliqué, car c'est là l'essentiel. Mais une inquiétude subsiste. La filière bovine souffre d'une crise et le CETA ne doit en rien l'amplifier. Quelle garantie apportez-vous sur les clauses de sauvegarde car la vigilance de la droite française sera à son maximum sur la réactivité de la Commission en cas de distorsion ou de chute des prix. À ce titre, le Canada a prévu un programme d'aide de 350 millions de dollars afin de compenser les effets négatifs du CETA sur son secteur laitier. Je souhaite donc, Madame la Commissaire, demander au nom de ma délégation que de telles modalités financières soient débloquées pour la filière bovine européenne. Je vous remercie. Mr. Langer, one and a half minutes. Thank you, Frau President and Frau Commissarin. Klar, the CETA-Abkommen is not perfect. But gerade wir Sozialdemokratinnen und Sozialdemokraten haben die Sorgen und Befürchtungen der Menschen hier aufgenommen und Verbesserungen erkämpft. Und das glaube ich muss man 
bewerten, um zu sagen, dieses Abkommen ist ein Schritt in die Richtung der Gestaltung der Globalisierung. Wir haben ja dafür gesorgt, dass private Schiedsgerichte auf den Müllhaufen der Geschichte kommen. Wir haben dafür gesorgt, dass Daseinsvorsorge gesichert wird und auch die Rekommunalisierung von einem Handelsabkommen unbeeinträchtigt ist. Wir haben dafür gesorgt, dass das universelle Arbeitnehmergrundgesetz, die Kernarbeitsnormen der Internationalen Arbeitsorganisation verankert werden und auch durchsetzbar gestaltet werden. Wir haben dafür gesorgt, dass unser Vorsorgeprinzip gesichert ist, also kein Hormonfleisch und kein GVO Lebensmittel nach Europa durch dieses Abkommen kommen. Also das ist eine Messlatte für alle Abkommen, für zukünftige, aber auch für bestehende. Ich glaube, die privaten Schiedsgerichte müssen auch aus allen anderen Abkommen verschwinden. Aber ich bin auch der Überzeugung, dass dieses Abkommen, liebe Kolleginnen und Kollegen, nicht das Ende der Geschichte ist. Wir müssen weiter für vernünftige Abkommen streiten, zum Beispiel für die Verbesserung der Durchsetzbarkeit von Nachhaltigkeit, für die Bekämpfung der Korruption, für die globalen Nachhaltigkeitsziele. Das muss auch in zukünftige Abkommen hinein. Angesichts einer Situation global, wo mehr und mehr Protektionismus gilt, wo mehr und mehr das Recht des Stärkeren gilt, brauchen wir stabile Regeln. Globalisierung können wir nicht abschaffen. Globalisierung müssen wir gerecht gestalten, liebe Kolleginnen und Kollegen. Oh Canada, oh Canada, how long the EU has kept you waiting. Um, after seven long years, the champions of free trade have battled through and now we are at the final furlong. To be clear, CETA is an ambitious, modern and comprehensive trade agreement which will bring tremendous benefits to the EU as a whole and to each one of the member states. Once fully implemented, it is expected to increase bilateral trade between the EU and Canada by 23%, representing approximately 26 billion per year. It will lead to the creation of jobs and economic growth, allowing small and medium-sized enterprises access to the Canadian market free of barriers. As a champion of free trade, I welcome this agreement and look forward to seeing a positive vote in this chamber today. In times of growing protectionism, the EU must not underestimate the benefits of trade agreements like this, especially when we are negotiating with reliable and strategic partners such as Canada, who are and remain our allies. Mr. Payat, one minute, please. Thank you very much. First, uh, I should say that Trade Commissioner Cecilia Malmström has done very good and serious work to prepare uh, this agreement. EU-Canada trade agreement is a good and modern trade agreement that will help boost trade and economic activity. And it has many advantages which have all been listed many times here already from opening the markets for goods, benefiting SMEs and opening up the procurement market. It also allows us to promote and protect our shared values. CETA will help create jobs and economic growth, which is very much needed. But this, is deal is, but this deal has also more significant value. It is the most elaborate deal with a successful OECD country. And with coming to an agreement with Canada, we show that this kind of agreements can be done. And this is a very important message. It is also an important deal geopolitically. EU and Canada must strengthen and hold their alliance in this changing, instable environment. CETA is a <coughs> good indication that where there is a will, there is a way. Thank you. Monsieur Lairic, one minute, please. Ceux d'entre nous qui voteront ce traité porteront une lourde responsabilité contre l'emploi, l'environnement, le progrès social, l'agriculture et l'alimentation. Ils vont contribuer à enfermer les peuples dans une véritable camisole de force. Comment en effet accepter d'appliquer un accord si néfaste, de manière provisoire, sans l'aval des parlements nationaux Comment accepter un mécanisme dit de coopération réglementaire qui adaptera les législations nationales et européennes a priori, c'est-à-dire avant même leur élaboration par les parlements Et pour cadenasser l'ensemble, Des tribunaux arbitraux condamneront les États et les peuples s'ils n'obéissent pas aux ordres des multinationales. Notre Parlement se grandirait à dire non à la constitutionnalisation du droit des affaires contre les droits humains, non à ce coup d'État institutionnel 
au service des puissances industrielles et financières. Mr. Obermeier, one minute. Thank you. Vorsitzende, Täter steht nun vor der Abstimmung. Das Ergebnis scheint leider schon festzulegen. Warum auch wäre sonst der kanadische Premierminister bereits heute in der Tagesordnung verankert? Und letztlich bleiben unsere Kritikpunkte nach wie vor im Vertragstext enthalten, wie zum Beispiel Schiedsgerichte als Paralleljustiz, wie die sogenannten Joint Committees, durch welche unsere nationalen parlamentarischen Meinungsbildungen ausgehöhlt werden, wie die Abschaffung des Vorsorgeprinzips, wodurch der Verbraucherschutz in Europa geschädigt wird und wie die enormen äh, Importkontingente zu Niedrigpreisen, die unsere Landwirtschaft zerstören werden. Ich sage klar und deutlich, ja zum Handel, aber nein zum Abbau von nationalstaatlichen parlamentarischen Kompetenzen, nein zur Umgebung der demokratischen, Umgebung der demokratischen Gerichtsbarkeit und nein zur Entmündigung der Bürger in Europa. CETA ist und bleibt ein trojanisches Pferd, das die europäischen Werte gefährden und dramatisch verletzen wird. Mr. Fisas, one minute. Gracias, Presidenta, Comisaria. Muchas gracias por su trabajo. Tiene el total apoyo de nuestro grupo político. En estos tiempos de incertidumbre es importante que la Unión Europea dé una señal clara de que apuesta por la apertura por estrechar lazos con nuestros socios por el comercio internacional. Y qué mejor señal que la ratificación del acuerdo con Canadá. Juntos podemos sentar las bases del comercio internacional del futuro, un comercio basado en nuestros principios y valores que respeta los altos estándares que ambas regiones compartimos. CETA es un acuerdo moderno, ambicioso y equilibrado, y sería deseable que pueda servir de modelo para otros acuerdos comerciales. El futuro de la Unión Europea pasa por el comercio exterior, de que depende gran parte de nuestro crecimiento económico y la creación de empleo. Este acuerdo es bueno para Europa, para las pymes y es bueno para el presente y el futuro de los ciudadanos europeos. Los que están en contra de CETA están a favor de las políticas de Trump. Mr. Martin, one and a half minutes. Thank you, uh, thank you President. Even when I disagree with them, I normally understand where my colleagues in the Greens and my friends on the left are coming from. But frankly, in relation to CETA, I just don't get it. CETA creates employment opportunities. CETA protects public services. No forced privatization, no ratchet clause. CETA defends our right to regulate, so no uh, Frankenstein foods in our market, no threat to food safety. It contains an ambitious labor chapter. It contains... A, it commits our partners to multilateral environment uh, agreements in a time when Trump threatens the Paris Accord, a vital thing. It uh, kills ISDS and replaces it with a modern, fair system of investment protection. So what is it beyond the rhetoric, beyond the, the words that this is good for corporations? What is it in CETA they really object to? Because I don't hear it. I hear a lot of words, but I hear no substance in their objection to, to CETA. And that's what they should be standing up for. We live in a world that faces real dangers of protectionism. With this progressive deal, Canada and the EU are not only keeping markets open, they're keeping those markets open on the basis of common values. And that's something we should applaud. Thank you, Chair. One minute, Mr. Starbatty. Frau Präsidentin, ich habe die Debatte hier aufmerksam verfolgt und habe hier eine bizarre Koalition festgestellt. Die Grünen, Marine Le Pen und Gouy sind einer Meinung, was CETA angeht. Als Herr Jadot seine Rede gehalten hat, kam frenetischer Beifall von der Koalition von Marine Le Pen. Das ist die Realität, wie sich hier darstellt. Und wir wissen aus der Geschichte, das sind diejenigen, die sich immer gegen Offenheit und Freihandel gestellt haben. Das wissen wir, das haben wir hier bestätigt gesehen. Und dann greift Herr Jadot Trump an, scharf an, mit denselben Argumenten, die auch Herr Trump vertritt. Also, er greift Trump an, spielt aber die Karte von Trump. Das sollte man sich einmal klar machen. Mir geht es darum, dass die Feinde der, des Freihandels und die Freunde des Protektionismus sich einmal ihre Argumente klar machen und selber mal durchdeklinieren. Danke. 
Mr. Michel, one minute. Oui, Madame la Présidente, chers collègues, je voudrais d'abord commencer par féliciter la commissaire Malmström pour l'extraordinaire patience, la remarquable compétence et la disponibilité surtout dont elle a témoigné pour faire face souvent à des outrances et à des contre-vérités. Parce qu'enfin, quand même, est-ce que le CETA va nous forcer à manger du poulet chloré, du bœuf aux hormones, des OGM ou encore à démanteler nos services publics Bien sûr que non Ce qui n'est pas possible aujourd'hui ne sera pas plus demain. Nous resterons maîtres de renforcer encore davantage nos standards de qualité et de développer nos services publics. Est-ce que nous octroyons aux multinationales un poids démesuré qui va nuire à notre système juridique Bien sûr que non La volonté d'établir une nouvelle Cour internationale ne fait que renforcer notre capacité à faire respecter les règles à l'échelle mondiale et à en inspirer de plus sévères si on le souhaite. Si nous ne pouvons pas, chers collègues, signer un accord avec le Canada, avec qui alors pourrons-nous encore signer un accord qui peut croire sincèrement qu'un pays de 35 millions d'habitants dont les performances démocratiques et les protections sociales et environnementales sont souvent supérieures aux critères de nombreux États européens, pourrait dévoyer le modèle économique, social et politique de la première puissance économique mondiale. Ceux qui s'y opposent et qui abusent de la bonne foi des citoyens nient les progrès sociaux, humains et économiques du libre-échange. C'est ça la vérité. En I, fait, c'est un blocage idéologique. Rien Michel. We do have some strict time limits, colleagues, so I now give the floor for one minute to Madame Forenza. Presidente, sarebbe una buona battuta, signora commissaria, se non fosse una tragedia. Sarebbe una buona battuta dire che il CETA è la risposta progressista al protezionismo di Trump e al populismo delle destre. Ecco, voi ponete in alternativa al protezionismo di Trump un'altra forma di protezionismo. Proteggete il diritto al profitto, istituite un diritto ineguale che protegge le multinazionali, protegge il profitto, gli investimenti, le multinazionali prima delle persone. Anche noi abbiamo una forma di protezionismo. Vogliamo proteggere il lavoro, l'ambiente, la salute alimentare, i cittadini e le cittadine europee, vogliamo proteggere la democrazia. Voi dite... Il CETA creerà posti di lavoro. Peccato che gli studi hanno dimostrato che saranno persi 230.000 posti di lavoro, di cui 200.000 soltanto in Europa. Trudeau l'ambientalista, Trudeau l'ambientalista che ha dato il suo via libera all'oleodotto Keystone negli Stati Uniti, applaudendo al famigerato Trump. Trudeau che si accinge ad esportare in Europa quel petrolio estratto dalle sabbie bituminose e dagli scisti che la direttiva ci invitava a tagliare. Voglio dire un'ultima cosa. I socialisti ci avevano annunciato la fine della grande Thank coalizione. Oggi ci Thank dimostrano you. che la grande coalizione continua. Noi Please. restiamo in coalizione con i cittadini e le cittadine. I hate to say this, but your last words were wasted. And with respect, I did give you extra time. I'm trying to be fair to everybody, and I need to be strict. And just to say to colleagues who've come into the chamber, we have announced earlier that there will be no further blue cards. So that is for the information of colleagues who've joined us. Now for one minute, I give the floor to Mr. Chiku. Thank you. Grazie, Presidente. Onorevoli colleghi, credo che in maniera responsabile e seria, dobbiamo dire che oggi eh, discutiamo su un buon accordo di libero scambio e discutiamo anche finalmente di una prospettiva di politica commerciale dell'Europa, di un'Europa che esiste, di un'Europa che costituisce un modello, un punto di riferimento eh, che realizza la possibilità di far capire che bisogna poter vincere le sfide se, si se ci si prepara alle sfide. Intendo dire che questo libero scambio offre l'opportunità di uscire fuori dallo stallo dei mercati eh, italiano, francese, spagnolo, europeo, che sono nello stallo più totale. Il Fondo Monetario Internazionale dice che il 90% si può realizzare come sviluppo fuori dai confini dell'Europa. Allora io credo che 
seriamente l'approfondimento vada nella direzione di capire come e in che modo il processo di internazionalizzazione della nostra piccola e media impresa, con una dimensione adeguata, con un accesso di credito opportuno, con la possibilità di managerialità, vada realizzata per confrontarsi e per realizzare questi obiettivi. Per cui eh, il tempo è poco a disposizione. Io naturalmente, come delegazione italiana, sosteniamo questo accordo. Grazie. One and a half minutes. Mr. Fleckenstein. Frau Präsidentin, liebe Kolleginnen und Kollegen, bei aller unterschiedlicher Meinung zu CETA sollten wir doch gemeinsam auch bedenken und positiv bedenken unser Abkommen über strategische Partnerschaft. Das ist wichtiger denn je. Die bilaterale Zusammenarbeit in den Bereichen Kultur und Außen- und Sicherheitspolitik, Bekämpfung von Terrorismus und organisierter Kriminalität Wirtschafts- und Tourismus. Es gibt einen gemeinsamen Kooperationsausschuss in Zukunft und regelmäßige Konsultationen, und das begrüßen wir sehr. Es geht nämlich um gemeinsame Werte, um Freiheit und Demokratie, Toleranz und Rechtsstaat und um klare Stellung, gemeinsame Stellung gegen Ausgrenzung und für ein gleichberechtigtes Miteinander. Ich habe nicht den Eindruck, dass diese Werte sich im Moment rasend vermehren. Umso wichtiger ist es, dass wir mit Freunden gemeinsam zu zusammenarbeiten, die zu diesen Werten stehen. Liebe Kolleginnen und Kollegen, vielleicht ist es in der Vergangenheit bei uns so gewesen, dass immer, wenn wir über den großen Teich geguckt haben, wir die Kanadier nicht richtig gesehen haben, weil so ein großes Vereinigte Staaten von Amerika dazwischen lag. Nein, es wird Zeit, auch nach den letzten Entwicklungen, dass wir aufstehen. Da kann man über manches hinweg gucken und man sieht seine wahren Freunde. Ich freue mich auf diese bessere Zusammenarbeit mit unseren Freunden in Kanada. Madame Fotika, one minute, please. Uh, dziękuję. Relacje polsko-kanadyjskie mają charakter strategiczny, niekoniunkturalny, potwierdzony wielokrotną walką o naszą wolność. CETA nie jest umową idealną, nie ma zresztą umów idealnych, chociaż jej szanse świetnie opisał czeski poseł Jan Zachradil. Tę umowę oceniał jednak jako dodatkowy element naszej architektury bezpieczeństwa. Relacje transatlantyckie wzmacniają Polskę, również w układzie wewnątrzeuropejskim. Madame Goulard, one minute, please. Merci, Madame le Président. Il faut entendre les inquiétudes des peuples, mais il ne faut pas non plus suivre toutes les angoisses quand on détermine une politique. Et ce que je tenais à dire, c'est que Madame Malmström et la Commission agissent dans le cadre de pouvoirs qui ont été, leur ont été conférés dans les traités démocratiquement. Les parlements nationaux ont accepté que les compétences commerciales soient exclusivement exercées au niveau européen. Il n'y a pas eu d'entourloupe, il y a eu des débats dans tous nos pays quand on a pris cette décision. Et je fais confiance non seulement à la commissaire mais à la commission pour à l'avenir également exercer tous les devoirs de sauvegarde qui seront nécessaires. Le Canada, que je tiens à saluer, est un pays démocratique, doté de règles. C'est un de nos alliés et j'attire l'attention des Français. C'est aussi un pays qui est en partie francophone et envers lequel nous devons prouver une certaine solidarité. La France est un pays qui a de grandes difficultés en matière de commerce extérieur. Nous accusons un déficit de 48 milliards d'euros pour l'année 2016. Donc les débouchés avec un pays sûr, juridiquement euh, proche de nous, sont toujours bons à prendre dans des conditions encadrées et nous comptons sur vous pour les faire respecter, Madame le Commissaire. Au revoir. One minute, Monsieur Malachon. L'accord est mauvais pour la France et mauvais pour l'Europe. Il est une contribution aggravante à la crise écologique et sociale de la civilisation humaine parce qu'il ne comporte pas la moindre mention au traité sur le climat de Paris, parce qu'il encourage l'importation des énergies fossiles les plus sales du monde, parce qu'il encourage l'agriculture la plus brutale, la plus cruelle et la plus déloyale, parce qu'il instaure des tribunaux spéciaux qui permettent aux grandes entreprises d'ester contre les lois des peuples, mais en même temps, il accepte le dumping social d'un pays qui n'a pas signé la convention de l'Organisation internationale du travail sur les négociations. 
Ce texte n'aurait jamais pu être adopté ni même négocié si ma patrie s'y était opposée et le gouvernement de mon pays porte une responsabilité particulière dans cet instant. De même qu'ici, dans cette Assemblée, cet accord ne serait pas accepté si le groupe social-démocrate n'y donnait pas son appui. C'est au total un très mauvais coup contre l'Europe et contre ma patrie qui va se commettre. Et les générations futures s'en souviendront, je veux le croire, au moins à l'élection présidentielle de France de 2017. One minute, Mrs. Christ Holt Roval. Vielen Dank, Frau Präsidentin, verehrte Kolleginnen und Kollegen. Als stellvertretende Vorsitzende der Delegation für die Beziehungen zu Kanada habe ich CETA seit Beginn der Verhandlungen verfolgt. Nach zahlreichen Gesprächen auf beiden Seiten des Atlantiks ist es höchste Zeit, die Ziellinie zu überqueren. Und ich bin zuversichtlich, dass wir heute unser Teil dazu beitragen werden. Der Vertrag CETA ist für die Zukunft gedacht. Der ist nicht nur für jetzt und für uns. Wir müssen uns positionieren als Europäische Union, als Europäer in einer Welt in Veränderung. Wir wollen diese Veränderung gestalten und da bleibt nicht viel anders übrig, als endlich zu handeln. Dies ist ein Zeichen, dass wir es können. Wir sollten allerdings auch nicht so tun, als ob Investitionsschiedsgerichte bisher nicht existieren. Nein, sie existieren bisher. Verschließen wir nicht die Augen für die Realität. CETA wird dieses System verbessern, das begrüße ich. Und als Letztes, mich wundert sehr in dieser politischen Situation, dass rechts und links exakt die gleichen Argumente benutzen und dann noch glauben, sie haben beide Recht. Vielen Dank. One minute, Mr. Poche. Děkuji za slovo. Vážená paní komisařko, vážená paní předsedající, Evropská unie a Kanada udržují bezmála 40 let velmi dobré obchodní i politické vztahy. Ty je nutné prohlubovat i v oblastech nejenom obchodní, ale i bezpečnostní, ochrany klimatu nebo životního prostředí. Z tohoto pohledu je dohoda o strategickém partnerství zcela jistě přínosem pro obě strany. Nesmíme však zapomínat, že Kanada bude mít vždy na standardní vztahy například se Spojenými státy nebo zeměmi bývalého britského společnosti. Není možné pod vlivem Brexitu a vítězství Donalda Trumpa opustit pragmatický přístup při vyjednávání mezinárodních smluv. Současná kanadská reprezentace nám může být blízká hodnotově a může nám být i sympatická. Na druhou stranu na tom nemůžeme ale stavět naše vztahy k ní. Není možné přistupovat dvojím metrem k TTIPu a k CETě. Obě dohody jsou vyjednány špatně a my musíme najít odvahu hledat nové změní této obchodní dohody a odmítnout to. Na tento návrh. Děkuji. One minute, Mr. Kölmel. Vielen Dank, Frau Präsidentin. Wir reden heute über CETA. Allerdings nutzen einige das, um einen Stellvertreterkrieg zu führen gegen die Folgen der Globalisierung. Das ist schade, denn CETA ist ein hervorragend verhandeltes Handelsabkommen zwischen zwei Partnern, die die gemeinsamen gleichen Werte vertreten. Insofern ist es, denke ich, ausgesprochen unfair, die Folgen der Globalisierung, die man ja tatsächlich durchaus kritisch betrachten kann und wo man durchaus auch überlegen kann, wie kann man die abmildern, die jetzt an dem Verfahren zu CETA festzumachen. Die Globalisierung findet statt, ob wir das wollen oder nicht. Also müssen wir sie, so gut es geht, gestalten. Das ist bei CETA meines Erachtens der Fall. Ich danke da insbesondere unseren kanadischen Freunden auch sehr, dass sie bereit waren, auch nach Abschluss der Verhandlungen, die Verhandlungen für einen Teil, nämlich den Bereich der internationalen Handelsschiedsgerichte, noch mal zu öffnen. Das war nicht selbstverständlich und als Vorsitzender der EU-Kanada-Delegation bin ich da besonders dankbar dafür. Mr. Winkler, one minute, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, distinguished uh, colleagues. Uh, Commissioner, uh, we need to protect European industries and European farmers, and we need to support and protect our SMEs, startups and exporters. We also need to protect and promote our services industries, innovation and European IPR. 
This is a broad consensus, I believe, uh, inside and also outside of this uh, House. But how to achieve this? Uh, is protectionism the best protection that we can provide? History of global economy and trade in the last 100 years teaches us that protectionism is a poor tool. The costs of protectionist measures always turned out to be higher than the short-term gain of such measures. The best we can do for uh, European industries, for SMEs and farmers, is the active promotion of their interest. Today, that means providing for a fair, modern, 21st century trade agreement with, li with a like-minded partner. Today, that means approving CETA. One minute, Mr. Panzeri. Grazie, Presidente. Sono dell'opinione che gli accordi di libero scambio dovrebbero essere effettivamente posti al servizio di obiettivi più vasti, quali l'occupazione, i diritti umani, la coesione e lo sviluppo sostenibile. Mi domando, possiamo dire che il SETA risponde a questi diversi obiettivi? E confesso davvero che ho grande difficoltà a rispondere positivamente a questa domanda. Seconda considerazione, sembra esserci in questo Parlamento un'opinione prevalente che ritiene che questo accordo possa diventare un modello di riferimento per la prossima generazione di accordi. Io la penso diversamente e non ritengo che il SETA possa essere l'inizio di un nuovo corso. Infine, voglio ricordare a lei, signora Commissario, che i rischi di ritorno al protezionismo e da guerre commerciali non si combattono con una critica promozione della liberalizzazione e della deregolamentazione degli scambi e degli investimenti, come lei immagina, ma cambiando radicalmente l'approccio fin qui seguito, ed è quello che dobbiamo fare davvero anche con il voto. Mr. Nicholson, one minute. Thank you very much, Madam President, Commissioner. CETA has been many years in the making, and we are now at the final stage. Canada is a country very similar to ourselves. If we cannot do a trade deal with Canada, who can we do a trade deal with? There are many historical ties between my constituency of Northern Ireland and Canada, and we have significant economic ties today. For instance, the Canadian company Bombardier have operations in Northern Ireland, and I hope that, we are, that once this deal is in place, it will strengthen and deepen those ties. We all know that any trade deal is not perfect, and CETA comes with positives and also negatives, and we are well aware of that. When the United Kingdom eventually leaves the European Union and embarks on its own trade policy, I hope it takes a balanced approach. The government seems to believe at the moment we can do deals quickly. I believe quick deals are bad deals for the people. Throughout discussions on CETA, TTIP and Mercosur, I have repeatedly made the point that the European Union must not use agriculture as a bargaining chip, and I will continue to make that case as the United Kingdom embarks on its own bilateral trading relationships. Thank you. Madame Saifi, one minute. Le CETA is an accord interesting and equilibrated. It represents de numerous opportunities for our entreprises. Nous avons entendu les préoccupations des citoyens et c'est pourquoi nous allons suivre de très près la mise en œuvre de l'accord s'il est ratifié. La Commission devra respecter ses engagements et déclarations. Les clauses de sauvegarde devront être déclenchées immédiatement en cas de difficulté d'un secteur et pour cela une attention particulière devra être portée au secteur agricole. Madame la Commissaire, les inquiétudes exprimées reflètent une défiance grandissante vis-à-vis -vis de la politique commerciale de l'Union et doivent obtenir des réponses. Nous devons développer une transparence maximale autour des négociations. Enfin, à l'heure où aux États-Unis, Donald Trump a fait le choix du protectionnisme, nous devons renforcer nos liens avec des partenaires qui, comme le Canada, partagent nos valeurs. Et puis, je regrette que Mme Le Pen évoque le vote en commission des députés et les Républicains, car elle semble oublier que ce jour-là, elle était absente et qu'elle n'a pas voté. Thank you. Mr. Kofel, one minute. President, Fru Kommissar Malmström, vi politikere har en simpel pligt til altid at stræbe efter bedre standarder, efter bedre beskyttelse af arbejdere, miljøet, klimaet og folkesundheden. Vi må altid sætte menneskers ved og vel over hensyn til profit. Det er principper, værdier og holdninger, der for mig helt ufravillige, og sådan skal det være. I CETA-aftalen har vi for første gang for alvor 
skrevet disse garantier, ja, disse værdier direkte ind i en handelsaftale. Sammen med Kanada åbner vi et nyt kapitel for færre og bæredygtig handel. Vi lægger den med rette for hatte i SDS-mekanisme i graven. Og vi står fast med syvtømmer som, at virksomheder ikke kan sagsøge lande, fordi de mister indtægter på grund af skrabere, nye nationale eller europæiske regler. Det er kun folkets demokratiske valgte repræsentanter, der skal lave lov, og det skal de kunne gøre frit. Blandt andet derfor støtter jeg som socialdemokrat CETA-aftalen og håber, den bliver vedtaget senere i dag. Tak for ordet. Mr. Fjellner, one minute. Micro. Microphone. Tack för ordförande. Efter sju år så är vi äntligen här. Men jag känner mig kluven. Jag är glad att vi ska få godkänna avtalet. Men jag är beklämd att det sitter så hårt inne. Att så många extremister här inne och annorstädes ägnat så mycket tid och kraft till att försöka stoppa ett samarbets- och handelsavtal med Kanada. Att man med lögner eller alternativa fakta som de kanske kallas nu för tiden försökt att kidnappa det här avtalet för att istället driva sin egen agenda på höger och vänsterkanten av nationalism och socialism. För det är här man ser att de är samma andas barn. Det är när det handlar om att försvara protektionism och sätta upp gränser som höger extremer och vänster extremer möts. Men det här är ett bra avtal. Det är ett väldigt bra avtal. Det tar bort 99 procent av alla tullar. Det skapar jobb i de över 900 000 företag som är beroende av handel med Kanada. Och indirekt skapar jobb i hela Europa. Men det handlar inte bara om Kanada. Det handlar om vår trovärdighet på den internationella scenen. Kan vi inte ens sluta ett avtal med Kanada, då lägger vi ner vår möjlighet att påverka världshandeln. Och det har inte Europa råd med, det har inte världen råd med. Och därför ska vi rösta ja idag. Thank you. One minute for Madam Rodriguez Pinero. Can you decide today what model of international trade defends the European Union? If the protection of Trump against America first, or the first principles and values first, through a commercial policy that puts rules on globalization to make it more just? A commercial policy that does not just limit itself to suppress barriers to commerce, but to guarantee y promover los estándares sociales, laborales y medioambientales de la Unión Europea en el resto del mundo. CETA no es un acuerdo perfecto. Ningún acuerdo lo es. Siempre hay margen de mejora y ese es nuestro papel. Pero con CETA, gracias al trabajo de muchos, también desde luego de nuestro grupo, hemos dado pasos importantes en materia de transparencia, de desarrollo sostenible, de participación de la sociedad civil y de defensa de nuestro estado del bienestar y de los servicios públicos. CETA es una oportunidad porque con este acuerdo nos comprometemos con nuestros socios canadienses a avanzar hacia una globalización más justa y solidaria. Y a mis compañeros de la GUE de Españoles les digo que ser de izquierdas no es ser proteccionista ni nacionalistas. Si creen eso, les superan por la izquierda Donald Trump, Marie Le Pen y los compañeros antropoyistas de la bancada de la extrema derecha. Madam Andrew Kern, one minute, please. Šiandien ratifikuojame labai svarbų Europos Sąjungai labai reikalingą susitarimą. Moderniausią susitarimą Europos Sąjungos istorijoje. Susitarimą, kurį pasiekė dvi demokratijos, Europos Sąjunga ir Kanada. Mūsų susitarimą su tas pačias vertybės gerbiančia Kanada kurioje atleiskite už palyginimą gyvūnų teisės yra labiau gerbiamos negu žmogaus teisės, kurioje nors kitoje mūsų šalyje partnerėje, su kuria musieja laisvosios prekybos susitarimai. Kritika dėl to, kaip viešusios paslaugos reglamentuojamos šiame susitarime yra visiškai nepamatuota kalbu apie švietimą, apie sveikatos apsaugą ir apie aplinką. Nebejoju, kad kai susitarimas jums galioti, Europos Sąjungos piliečiai, darbininkai ir kompanijos greitai pajus jos naudą. Kai buvo ir Europos Sąjungos Korejos susitarimo atveju. Nauda pajus ir Lietuvos eksportuotojai. Remiušį susitarimą. Ačiū. Madame Arena, one minute. Madame la Commissaire, chers collègues, 
la caricature selon laquelle il n'existe que deux écoles en matière de commerce international. L'école du protectionnisme qui a été prônée par les populistes et l'école de l'ultralibéralisme qui est partagée par une grande majorité de ce Parlement. Cette caricature est insupportable. Je dirais même qu'elle est assez... Cette conception bipolaire est suicidaire aujourd'hui en Europe. L'Europe est capable de faire mieux, l'Europe mérite mieux. À l'heure où tous s'interrogent sur leur avenir, où la rupture de confiance aujourd'hui vis-à-vis du système politique et du système économique est à son paroxysme, nous, dans cette Assemblée, nous allons signer un accord, nous allons voter un accord « business as usual ». Un accord qui donne plus de droits aux multinationales. Un accord qui fragilise les services publics, les agriculteurs, les PME, les pays les moins exportateurs. Un accord qui place le droit des investisseurs au-dessus des droits sociaux et des droits environnementaux. Un accord qui n'est pas un accord de nouvelle génération, mais qui est un accord du passé. C'est la raison pour laquelle je voterai contre. One minute, Mrs. Redding. Chers collègues, on entend tout et son contraire sur CETA. Je voudrais un instant revenir au fait, car voter pour CETA, c'est garantir la réciprocité, soutenir nos PME, promouvoir des produits de qualité, protéger les consommateurs, défendre nos artistes. Voter contre, c'est continuer la justice privée, et refuser des standards internationaux élevés en matière sociale, environnementale, agroalimentaire. Voter pour CETA, c'est fixer le modèle de référence pour des futurs accords internationaux, réguler la globalisation en parfaite adéquation avec nos valeurs et nos intérêts. Voter contre, c'est consentir au manque de réciprocité et à l'absence de règles. Voter pour CETA, c'est protéger et partager les valeurs, bétonner les standards, créer des emplois. C'est la raison pour laquelle je vote pour CETA, pour affirmer le leadership de l'Europe, pour un accord qui est dans l'intérêt des citoyens et dans l'intérêt des entreprises et qui bétonne nos valeurs et nos systèmes démocratiques. Mr. Caputo, one minute. Merci, Président. Il CETA contrasta con principi e standard che ritengo assolutamente non negoziabili, dall'approccio alla sicurezza alimentare alle misure sugli interferenti endocrini, dagli impegni per il raggiungimento degli obiettivi climatici ed energetici ai livelli massimi per i residui di pesticidi, dal meccanismo di arbitrato agli spazi per l'intervento dei privati nei servizi pubblici, dal rischio di ingresso di prodotti OGM alla tutela delle produzioni di qualità. In Europa abbiamo 1.300 prodotti alimentari ad indicazione geografica, 2.800 vini e 330 distillati. Di questi il CETA ne tutelerà solo 173. Molte denominazioni di origine, dunque, che siamo abituati a considerare indicative di prodotti di qualità con forte legame al territorio, non saranno protette oltreoceano. È davvero un peccato che il CETA non abbia segnato una discontinuità e che l'Europa non abbia orientato i negoziati ad una maggiore protezione dei diritti dei consumatori, del principio di precauzione e delle clausole di protezione dell'ambiente. Io voterò contro. Il CETA non porta alcun beneficio ai cittadini europei. Grazie. Thank you. Mr. Salafranca, one minute. Gracias, señora presidenta. Señora comisaria, señorías, este acuerdo con Canadá llega en un momento muy particular de nuestro calendario, cuando se ha creído la primera prioridad de la política comercial de la Unión Europea, que era el acuerdo con Estados Unidos. La Unión Europea es el principal bloque exportador del mundo de bienes, es el principal bloque exportador del mundo de servicios, principal inversor y receptor de inversión extranjera directa y uno de los principales bloques importadores. En contra de lo que se ha dicho, este acuerdo es un paso decidido en la buena dirección y es un acuerdo equilibrado, justo, que redundará en beneficio de los intereses de nuestros ciudadanos, creando prosperidad y empleo. Por lo tanto, quisiera felicitar a la Comisión por esta negociación y, aunque a mí me hubiera gustado que hubiera podido concluirse en un plazo de tiempo más breve, siete años es demasiado largo, creo que va a marcar un hito este acuerdo. Y, por lo tanto, animaría a la Comisión a que en el plazo que queda Del, de su mandato antes del fin de esta Comisión Juncker, concluyera los acuerdos pendientes y me gustaría citar entre algunos Japón, Australia, Nueva Zelanda y, por supuesto, Mercosur. Muchas gracias, señora presidenta.
One minute, Mr. Silva Pereira. Senhora Presidente, Senhora Comissária, o acordo comercial com o Canadá é de importância estratégica para a União Europeia, sobretudo depois de Trump, e é a resposta necessária contra a perigosa ilusão do isolamento e do protecionismo. Este é também um bom acordo, um acordo equilibrado do ponto de vista económico, que elimina tarifas e permite o acesso ao mercado, e é uma nova referência para o comércio internacional, um acordo progressista para uma globalização mais regulada. Hoje podemos dizer que demos ouvidos aos cidadãos e que este acordo, por pressão deste Parlamento e da sociedade civil, respeita os valores ambientais, sociais da União Europeia, o nosso direito a regular no interesse público. Foi por pressão deste Parlamento e do Grupo Socialista que o sistema privado de arbitragem foi substituído por um novo sistema de arbitragem pública. E é porque este acordo foi melhorado que a sua versão final merece a confiança dos cidadãos e merece o voto favorável deste Parlamento Europeu. Mr. Scheinfeld, one minute. Dziękuję Pani Przewodnicząca. Niektórzy to mówią cynicznie do nas, do zwolenników CETA. Pokazujecie Państwo, jak bronicie obywateli Europy. To ja na to powiem, pokazujecie Państwo, jak cynicznie okłamujecie obywateli Europy, bo prezentujecie tu kłamstwa i opowiadacie bzdury. Tym, co mówią, jesteśmy przeciwko CETA, bo liczy się człowiek, to ja powiem, jesteśmy za umową CETA, bo liczy się człowiek. CETA to most przez Atlantyk łączący przyjaciół we współpracy na rzecz dobrej przyszłości. Niższe ceny, wyższa jakość, bezpieczeństwo obywateli, ochrona demokracji, ochrona praw człowieka i praw pracowniczych, a także ochrona środowiska i klimatu. To jest CETA. To są wartości, które chcecie tu bronić, a jednocześnie jesteście przeciwko CETA. Musicie się zdecydować. One minute, Mr. Morel. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Plus nous avançons dans ce débat sur le CETA, et plus j'ai l'impression que nous discutons en réalité d'un accord du vieux monde. Parce que contrairement à bien des collègues, moi je crois que le CETA n'est pas du tout un modèle pour l'avenir. D'abord, il passe à côté de toutes les grandes réussites de la diplomatie multilatérale des dernières années. La COP21 sur le climat, euh, l'accord du G20 sur l'évasion fiscale, il n'en parle pas. Mais surtout, au grand défi d'aujourd'hui, changement climatique, creusement des inégalités, défiance démocratique, le CETA n'oppose que des réponses passéistes. Toujours plus de libéralisation, toujours moins de services publics, toujours plus de concurrence, toujours plus, toujours plus de pouvoir pour les multinationales. Eh bien moi je crois que ce n'est pas la voie que nous devons emprunter. Et je reprends la formule d'une collègue à l'instant, l'Europe elle mérite mieux. Et franchement, chers collègues, ceux qui nous disent aujourd'hui que c'est soit Trump et Marine Le Pen d'un côté, soit le CETA de, de l'autre, on pourrait se garder de ce type de caricature. Moi, je pense que l'Europe, elle mérite mieux, elle peut mieux, et heureusement, nous avons des formidables points d'appui, la mobilisation de la société civile, la résistance de certains gouvernements, alors nous pouvons aller de l'avant et imaginer une autre politique commerciale. Merci. Mr. Ruas, one minute, please. Senhora Presidente, Senhora Comissária, este acordo inicié en 2009 et conclu en 2014, é, em nossa opinião, bastante completo, moderno, transparente e também voltado para o futuro. Acreditamos que, de avante, ele vai trazer benefícios para as empresas, para os trabalhadores e para os consumidores. É que, para lá da eliminação de 98% dos direitos adianeiros, este acordo prevê também a salvaguarda dos serviços públicos, audiovisuais, transportes e produtos agrícolas mais sensíveis. Com este acordo, haverá a garantia de proteção de 143 indicações geográficas europeias, 20 das quais são portuguesas. Importante também, na nossa opinião, é o reconhecimento mútuo de certificação para muitos produtos, bem como o reconhecimento de um conjunto alargado de profissões, desde engenheiros, arquitetos ou advogados. 
a manutenção de elevados padrões em matéria ambiental, de segurança alimentar, saúde e direitos dos consumidores, sempre com o respeito pelo cumprimento das regras e regulamentos europeus, é também um aspecto que gostamos de remarcar. Estou certo que a União Europeia irá beneficiar com este acordo e o meu país não será exceção, pois Portugal tem atualmente mais de mil empresas a exportar para o Canadá, sendo que 89% são pequenas e médias empresas que asseguram 12 mil postos de trabalho. É pois por isso que vou votar a favor do CETA. One minute, Madam Grass van der Heinz. Danke, Frau Präsidentin, werte Kolleginnen und Kollegen. CETA ist kein Teufelswerk. Da irren viele Kritikerinnen und Kritiker. Aber CETA ist ein Vertrag, der intransparent verhandelt wurde und der meiner Meinung nach nicht die richtigen Antworten auf die Globalisierung gibt. Wir haben heute schon mehrmals die Frage gehört, wie können wir Globalisierung gerecht gestalten? CETA in vorliegender Form leistet dazu keinen Beitrag. Deshalb kann ich CETA nicht zustimmen. CETA ist noch nicht gut genug. Nun, was lehrt uns CETA? Auf jeden Fall, dass wir es künftig anders machen müssen. Vielleicht wäre es gut, wieder zurück zu klassischen Handelsabkommen zu kommen und die regulatorische Kooperation in sektorspezifische Abkommen zu regeln. Essentiell ist aber, die nationalen Parlamente, die Zivilgesellschaft, die NGOs sowie das Europäische Parlament von Beginn an an den Verhandlungen teilzuhaben und während der Verhandlungen regelmäßig darüber zu informieren, die Bedenken ernst nehmen, die Haltung der Bürgerinnen und Bürger respektieren und mit einbeziehen. Nur auf diese Weise kann die europäische Handelspolitik wieder an Legitimation gewinnen. Was bei CETA schiefgelaufen ist, darf sich nicht wiederholen. Mr. Karras. Frau Präsidentin, wir erleben soeben eine Auseinandersetzung zwischen Verantwortung übernehmen oder Ängste schüren, zwischen Globalisierung regeln oder sich abschotten, zwischen Zukunft gestalten oder Chancen verspielen, zwischen Bewertung des Verhandlungsergebnisses und Fake News, zwischen ernsthaften sachlichen Debatten und einem unaufrichtigen parteitaktischen Doppelspiel. Ich bin froh, dass die Mehrheit der Abgeordneten der Europäischen Volkspartei, der Liberalen, der Konservativen und auch der Sozialdemokraten die Sorgen der Menschen ernst nehmen und nach intensiver Debatte entschieden haben, für das Handelsübereinkommen zu stimmen, weil wir das Ergebnis geprüft haben und weil die Sorgen und Fragen der Menschen in diesem Abkommen auf dem Boden des, der Rechts- und Wertegemeinschaft der Europäischen Union beantwortet werden. Wer sich abschottet, verliert. Wir gestalten. Wir wollen die Chance nützen. Mr. Gahler, one minute. We will move to our next speaker, Mr. Kovacev. One minute, please. Благодаря госпожо председател, споразумението е в интерес на европейските граждани и на бизнеса. То означава растеж и нови работни места без да се застрашават европейските стандарти в нито една сфера, въпреки безпардонните лъжи, които чухме днес от някои от колегите. Българската економика зависи от износа на стоки и услуги, който е около 70% от брутния вътрешен продукт. Тя има нужда от преки чуждестранни инвестиции и свободен достъп до пазари и на трети страни. Затова България, както и Европейския съюз като цяло, ще спечелят от споразумението. От безвизово пътуване, от по-лесно признаване на професионални квалификации и по-добър достъп до пазара на труда, от по-низки разходи за износителите, от възможности българските фирми да участват в търгове за обществени поръчки и отварянето на канадския пазар. Споразумението не е в общърп на малките и средни предприятия, а в тях на полза. Големите и без споразумението могат да оперират глобално. В продължение на месеци бяхме засипвани с апокалиптични сценарии. Споразумението ще залее Европа с ГМО, ще зароби европейските народи, ще доведе до колапс в економиката. Когато споразумението започне да се прилага, ще стане ясно колко плоски са били тези лъжи. Много е по-лесно да се подаведем на популизма, но е по-отговорно да обясниме на гражданите ползите от това споразумение. Благодаря ви. Мистер Кейлъм, една минута. Thank you very much. The EU was founded six years ago on the principles of four freedom. Our rapporteur Papricks told us today that it is a choice 
about the EU's future, openness, or protective and angry closing into ourselves. Also, Pope Francis told the European Parliament some years ago about his impression of a weary and aging Europe, which now reminds a grandmother, hesitant, defensive, but now also believing in political horror stories. Only op opening up has brought success and well-being to the citizens of Europe. CETA, therefore, constitutes, con constitutes a key means to rejuvenate EU's dynamics because every additional billion of EU exports supports 14,000 jobs in Europe. It is in fact a crucial test of EU's credibility, self-respect and reaffirmation of our founding principles of four, four freedoms. Commissioner Malmström, thank you so much for your dedication, faith and persistence. Yes, sir. It, is it in order for members to absent themselves from the debate and leave big placards rather than actually take part in the debate? I don't have the rules of procedure, but we take note of your comment. And we move to our next uh, speaker, Mr. Milan Mon, for one minute, please. Yo quiero manifestar mi apoyo al CETA y al acuerdo de partenariado estratégico con Canadá. Compartimos con este país muchos valores y objetivos. Son además nuestros socios en la NATO y cooperamos estrechamente para hacer frente a desafíos globales como el cambio climático. También apostamos por el multilateralismo y por el respeto del derecho internacional. El acuerdo de partenariado estratégico mejorará nuestro diálogo y coordinación. El acuerdo Z es el acuerdo de libre comercio, como ya se ha dicho, más moderno que la Unión Europea ha negociado. Permitirá un mejor acceso para nuestras empresas al mercado canadiense de alto poder adquisitivo. Además de un sistema innovador para la resolución de conflictos entre inversores y Estados, el Z establece una amplia apertura en materia de contratación pública, lo que me parece muy importante pues permitirá a las empresas europeas participar en contratos públicos también a nivel de provincias y municipios en Canadá. Es el acuerdo más amplio abierto en esta materia por este país. El Z dinamizará las relaciones económicas y comerciales con Canadá. En el mundo de hoy no se puede estar contra el comercio internacional. Todo lo contrario. El comercio trae prosperidad, beneficia a los consumidores y también crea empleo tan necesario en Europa. Gracias. Mr. Lambsdorff, one minute. Frau Präsidentin, die CETA-Gegner haben uns einzureden versucht, Kanada mit seinen 36 Millionen Einwohnern sei eine existenzielle Bedrohung für die Europäische Union. Ein Land, in dem die Queen das Staatsoberhaupt ist, wo Französisch gesprochen wird, der Staat die Medikamente bezahlt, in dem es eine sozialliberale Regierung gibt, die großherzig Flüchtlinge aufnimmt. Meine Damen und Herren, was für ein Unsinn. Wenn es uns als Europäer nicht gelingt, mit diesem Land ein Abkommen zu schließen, dann können wir alle anderen Verhandlungen sofort beenden. Und ich will das hier mal deutlich sagen. Ich habe auch den offenen Brief der Grünen gelesen von Reinhard Bütikofer und den Kollegen. Ich finde, es ist sowohl ahistorisch als auch scheinheilig, zu sagen, rechte Abschottung à la Marine Le Pen oder Donald Trump ist schlecht, linke Abschottung à la Attac oder Verdi ist super, rechter Nationalismus à la UKIP ist schlecht, linker Nationalismus à la Jean-Luc Mélenchon ist gut. Und es gibt auch keinen Unterschied zwischen rechten alternativen Fakten von Donald Trump und linken alternativen Fakten wie von der Linkspartei und anderen. Beide sind Lügen. Stimmen wir diesem Abkommen zu. Eine weltoffene Haltung heißt, Brücken über den Atlantik zu bauen und nicht Mauern zu errichten. Herzlichen Dank. Mr. Gahler, one minute. Vielen Dank, Frau Präsidentin. Ich werde heute für das CETA-Abkommen stimmen. Ich komme aus einer exportstarken Region, aus dem Land Hessen. Das ist Frankfurt und Umgebung. Wir haben ein starkes Interesse daran, dass der Handel auch mit Kanada sich verbessert, insbesondere auch für die Klein- und Mittelbetriebe, die es bisher schwierig hatten, in diesem Land Fuß zu fassen. Und ich bin immer wieder überrascht, welche seltsamen Konstellationen sich gegen dieses Abkommen finden. Das ist dann 
in Deutschland von Sarah Wagenknecht bis zur AfD-Vorsitzenden. Das ist dann von Donald Trump bis Mélenchon, von Marine Le Pen bis zu einigen deutschen Sozialdemokraten, was ich außerordentlich bedauere. Von daher hoffe ich, dass wir mit diesem Abkommen ein Zeichen setzen für eine neue Generation von fortschrittlichen Freihandelsabkommen, die als Vorbild dienen können, auch für künftige. Und deswegen bitte ich alle herzlich, diesem Abkommen zuzustimmen. Vielen Dank. Thank you, colleagues. We have 20 catch the eye requests. I'm going to take as many as I can, and I begin with Mr. Kelly for one sharp minute, please, and I'll be more strict this time. As a member of INTA and of the Canadian delegation in the last mandate, I have been following this agreement all that time. <clears throat> I must say, I am somewhat amazed at the alternative facts which are now in vogue in this establishment and around the world. You could say this is the age of alternative facts. One of them is uh, flying around my Twitter feed in the last few days. It says CETA will put 90 million jobs at risk. 90 million. That's nearly half the jobs in the European Union. And this is from a country, Canada, that has only 35 million people itself. These are the facts that are being perpetrated and people believe out there protesting today. If I thought it was going to cost 90 million jobs, I would be against it too. But in actual fact, it's the opposite. We're for it because it's going to create jobs. Create jobs in Europe, create jobs in Ireland, and that is what we want. South Korea agreement created 210,000 jobs, and yet a Canadian agreement is going to cost us jobs. Logical? No. Mrs. Grappini, one minute. Doamna președintă, doamna comisar, este un moment istoric pentru Uniunea Europeană pentru că este primul acord de liber schimb pe care Uniunea Europeană îl încheie cu o altă economie majoră din cadrul OCDE. Personal, cred în nevoia acordurilor comerciale încheiate cu alte țări non-europene, dar evident pe principiu câștig, câștig. Piața internă are nevoie să se dezvolte, să-și internaționalizeze afacerile, în special IMM-urile. Totdeauna când închei un acord, trebuie să te gândești ce pierzi și ce câștigi. Nu poți să pretinzi să câștigi doar tu. De aceea eu susțin acord acordurile comerciale concomitent cu măsuri de apărare comercială și aceasta este datoria Comisiei. Temerile mele de la începutul negocierilor au fost pulberate, cele legate de standarde de produs și de mecanismul juridic. Până la urmă, avem de luat o decizie economică, dar și politică și totdeauna trebuie să știm să alegem varianta cea mai bună pentru că soluția ideală nu există. Așadar, cred că avem datoria să susținem dezvoltarea pieței interne prin acorduri comerciale bune, nu să închidem piața internă. Vă mulțumesc! Mrs. Tomacic. Hvala lijepa. Oko CETA se digla nepotrebna prašina, a ljevičarske krajnje stranke i nevladine organizacije namjerno su vezale uz TTIP kako bi izazvale konfuziju javnosti. CETA je u svojoj strži puno transparentni i benevolentni sporazum koji evropskim tvrtkama otvara jedno bogato tržište zemlje koja ne predstavlja nikakvu ugrozu za Europu. Dakle, nema crnog scenarija. Probleme će naravno biti, ali zar nemamo problema u Europskoj uniji između država članica? Naravno, te probleme rješavamo novim pregovorima, a sa Kanadom možemo rješavati naravno i sustavom sporova. Kolegice i kolega, ako nismo sposobni sklopiti sporazum sa jednom benignom Kanadom, onda sa kime i jesmo? Slobodna je trgovina između Europe i Kanade prilika za obje strane. Za Hrvatsko je to prilika da se još bolje ekonomski poveže sa svojom dijasporom u Kanadi i vjerujem da ćemo biti hrabri i iskoristiti ovu priliku. Hvala lijepa. Mrs. Bilbao. Gracias, presidenta, comisaria. Gracias a usted y a su equipo por el gran trabajo realizado. Vamos a votar el CETA. Eh, porque favorece, vamos a apoyar mejor vamos a, el, el Z, porque favorece a las pymes, que son las principales creadoras de empleo en la Unión Europea, porque abre nuevas oportunidades de intercambio en sectores en los que somos líderes mundiales en calidad y tecnología, incluidas las producciones primarias de alta calidad, lo que solo puede reforzar esta posición y porque compartimos con Canadá valores y principios que van a salir reforzados al crecer con un acuerdo que los hace más presentes y fuertes en el comercio mundial. 
Esta es la mejor respuesta frente a otros estándares sociales o medioambientales que sin acuerdos como este encuentran más facilidades para prosperar. El equipo de comercio de la Comisión Europea ha demostrado en esta legislatura conocimiento, capacidad real para hacer evolucionar realidades hasta ahora inmóviles como el sistema de arbitraje y sensibilidad social y capacidad de interlocución. Oportunidades como la que abre este acuerdo son siempre mucho más que un no. Thank you. Mr. Flanagan, one minute. Mr. Flanagan. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I'm here to represent the people, and I would imagine most people are here to represent the people. But the problem is that the person who went out and negotiated this agreement has said that she does not take her mandate from the people. What sort of a democracy is this? Will we send someone out to negotiate on our behalf and she brazenly says to us that she doesn't take her mandate from the people? Well, I suppose she's been honest, not like a lot of the other commissioners. The Employment Committee is against this agreement because it will cost 204,000 jobs. And if MEP Kelly thinks this is an alternative fact, let him go into the Employment Committee and call them liars. The great irony, though, is that the man who casts doubt on these, if this unemployment that will be uh, occurring actually comes from a party who has a leader who is openly a liar. And I can say that because it's official. Thank you. One minute, Madam Hautala. Um, Commissioner, I would vote in favour of CETA if I could judge that the balance of interests is correct. But I don't think so. I think it weighs heavily on the side of enterprises and investors. But having said this, I look very much forward to working with you on the new trade agreements where this balance will be set right. And I, I welcome your, your suggestion on a broad consultation on how to embed sustainable development in a, in a legally binding way into the treaties. And I also believe that the European Parliament has to support you when you call for the Council to publish in the future uh, the negotiation mandates at an early stage because that will be the right way to, to proceed from now on. So at this moment um, we are dealing with the CETA agreement and let me say that even if uh, Canada is a very nice country and Trudeau is a very nice guy but some Canadian mining companies are not best known for their responsibility and accountability and this may be felt even in my country in Finland. Mr. Castaldo. Grazie Presidente, i carnevali passano ma certe maschere restano. Le maschere dell'ipocrisia di quanti spacciano il CETA per un semplice e banale accordo con il ridente Canada, fondato su principi e valori comuni, una pietra miliare del commercio sostenibile. Togliete la maschera e dite la verità. La verità sulla finta abolizione degli SDS, sui conflitti di interesse delle corti arbitrali, sui nostri diritti costituzionali calpestati a favore delle multinazionali. La verità sulle privatizzazioni e liberalizzazioni, liberalizzazioni selvaggi di acqua, sanità e servizi pubblici. La verità sui 230.000 lavoratori europei di cui avete svenduto per 30 denari impiego e dignità. Noi portavoce del Movimento 5 Stelle abbiamo scelto da che parte stare, dalla parte di chi non vuole farsi consumare dal consumismo, dalla parte di chi difende il diritto di tutti contro il profitto di pochi, dalla parte di 3 milioni e mezzo di firme di cittadini europei. No al cavallo di Troia del TTIP, no al CETA. Thank you. That completes the speaker's list. And um, we've had over 80 contributions in this debate, Commissioner, and I now invite you to respond. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam President, honourable uh, members of this House. It has indeed been a very long and interesting debate. We are here discussing a trade agreement. Trade has made the European Union the biggest economy of the world. It has benefited to the prosperity and welfare of Europeans. Trade outside uh, with other countries, outside the European Union, has created millions of jobs, 31,000 millions in the export sectors and many, many millions in the import sectors. Countries are queuing up to do trade agreements with us, but they are, of course, looking very carefully what is going to happen today, whether we are a reliable partner or not. Trade globally has lifted millions and millions of people out of poverty. So trade is a good thing. But of course, trade needs to be regulated in trade agreements, and that is what we discuss here today. 
This is not business as usual. This is a new type of trade agreement. It has economic advantages. We are taking away tariffs. We are, taking away, uh, we are increasing market access. We uh, have achieved the recognition of many important geographical indications. We are taking away red tape. And this is beneficial, after all, most for small and medium-sized companies. 80% of the 70,000 companies who today export to Canada are SMEs. And they have smaller margins than the big companies because they can always manage. They benefit from lower tariffs, from increased market access, from less red tape. And we are taking away tariffs, for instance, in textiles, 18%, shoes, up to 18% as well, machinery, 9%. These are not small sums for uh, small companies, and also many of them are involved in exporting geographical indications. And we know that trade works. The trade agreement with South Korea has increased export with impressive figures and created many jobs. This is also an agreement about values, about the right of governments to regulate, about maintaining our high standards, about labour rights, about environmental rights, about sustainable development, about reforming the old ISDS system. Because it wasn't invented in CETA, it has existed since 1959. It was invented in Germany. All countries except Ireland has ISDS clauses. We have made them more democratic, more uh, transparent and introducing uh, a more ethical system to that. And you here in the European Parliament have been very active in that transformation. Commissioner, with respect... On the beef Sorry, issue, I would like to address... Commissioner Malmström. Uh, ...aux collègues français qui m'ont écrit une lettre uh, sur les inquiétudes que vous avez... Just one okay. Don't just, no, no. Please, colleagues, we have had a very, very good debate this morning, and I would ask those who are coming into the chamber to, re to respect and have some silence, please. The Commissioner is explaining and responding to the debate, so I would ask you to respect her, her attempt to respond to your questions. Apologies for interrupting. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Madam President. Uh, oui, en effet, j'allais juste répondre aux collègues français qui ont euh, exprimé leurs inquiétudes sur le secteur bovin. J'ai discuté avec le commissaire Hogan et Monsieur le Président Juncker, et nous allons vous adresser une lettre euh, pour répondre plus au détail à vos questions. Mais je peux vous affirmer que dans le cadre de l'accord avec le Canada, il a été bien conçu, tenant compte de la sensibilité de ce secteur. Je reste confiant que les importations n'auront pas un effet dramatique sur le secteur et les services de la Commission assureront le suivi régulier des importations en question, y compris le taux de remplissage des continents, en utilisant tous les instruments que nous disposons afin d'être en mesure de réagir avec effectivité et rapidité si éventuellement il y a une dissortation. Mais je vous aurai plus de détails dans une lettre au fin de cette semaine. Actually, honourable, merci. Uh, actually, honourable members of this house, many of you for years have been calling for trade agreements who include sustainable development, human rights, labour rights, environment, climate, animal rights. All this is in. All this is in this unique agreement. But it does not include anything to force any municipality or country or region to do privatization. It will not lower standards. It will not prive the governments for regulating in the interest of the citizens. Things that are forbidden on the European market today will remain forbidden. And the Joint Committee will not change anything in our legislation. That is for the EU institutions, including you, to do that. We do this agreement with Canada, and I would like to salute the presence of the Minister of Trade, Monsieur Champagne, who is in the tribune here today. <laughs> Canada, Canada is a democratic country who shares so many of our values, who are committed to the rule of law, to human rights, who play an important international role to defend the multilateral system. They have a strong public sector. They are committed to work with us to shape globalization. 
Sorry, Commissioner, take a breath for one moment. I'm not going to resume this debate until we have some semblance of order and silence because the Commissioner is responding in detail to questions raised during the debate. Please bear with us. We are two more speakers and then we vote. Commissioner, again, and apologies for the interruption. Yes, uh, and Canada is committed to work with us in the framework of CETA and in the framework of our partnership agreement to work on all these issues that you have mentioned. Shaping globalization to set strong international rules, faithfully respecting the mandate given to us in the Commission by the Member States and in, expressed in the resolution of this Parliament. 28 governments have signed this agreement and it has been done in transparency. The CETA texts have been public since September 2014. The old ISCS reform has been public for a year. The original version has been online for two and a half years. There has been 12 meetings on this with the European Parliament, nine meetings with the Intercommittee, three workshops, two EP delegations, and I can go on. It has not been negotiated in secret. You will be involved in the implementation of all this, honourable members, um, and we will work with you in order to make sure that we reform and look at how we can become better in the implementation of the Sustainable Development Chapter. I do respect, and that is perfectly normal, that there are different views on this. You can be in favour and you can be against. Yes. Colleagues, once again, please. I don't want to name names who are speaking in the aisles. Would you please respect Commissioner Malmström and give her some attention? Again, and strength to your voice, Commissioner. I'm soon be done. So I respect that there will be people voting in favour and against. But calling a trade agreement with Canada a coup d'etat is frankly going too far. So, ladies and gentlemen, Madam Speaker, voting in a few minutes on the two agreements we have in front of us will enable us to take a great economic and geopolitical opportunity, deepening economic relations, affirming our social and our environmental protection, showing that trade and values can go hand in hand, strengthening a shared partnership, I hope that you will vote in favour of these two agreements that will send a strong signal to our friends in Canada but also to the rest of the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner. And again, colleagues, could you please take your seats? We have two final speakers and I give the rapporteur now the floor. Mr. Papriks, for two minutes, please. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear Minister of Canada, I will not repeat all those arguments in favour of trade agreement between European Union Sorry, and let, Canada. Let's try and get some silence. Because it was very well Sorry, uh, argumented Papri, by Mr. our Commissioner lately. I would like to say thank you very much to all those shadow rapporteurs like Mr. Moisa, Madame Schake, David Martin and others who contributed that this trade agreement here in Parliament is of such a high quality. Thank you to you. I also would like to agree with such speakers like Graf from Lambsdorff and others who noted that actually once more the far right and the far left of this House is united against everything what is good for European Union. If, if, if somebody is taking away the jobs, if somebody is taking away the wealth of people of Europe, if somebody is greasing the fundament of European nation states, then turn to these radicals on both sides. I believe that we will vote today correctly for the benefit of European Union. And I also would like to say that actually Next week already, we would have the first national parliament of my country of Latvia, 
who will ratify this agreement in national parliament and the other countries will be able to follow. And those who want really to listen to facts and not to be trumped by arguments, alternative arguments to the right and left, they should rather listen what kind of benefits it will bring to you after it comes into force provisionally. I believe that this vote is the right vote for our states, member states and for whole union as a whole. Let's go forward. I now give the floor for two minutes to Mr. Tannock, for two minutes. Shh. Quiet, please, colleagues, if, if we may. Yeah. Madam President, what's been very clear to me today in the debate is that there is a near universal appreciation for the strong ties that exist between Canada and the European Union across the House other than for a minority of alarmist, protectionist and isolationist voices on the far left and right of the chamber. Our shared culture, democratic norms and history binds us together in a way that's unique. It's vital that the EU champions those shared values to maintain the levels of prosperity and success that we enjoy today and to stand together as strong advocates for free trade and liberal multilateralism across the globe. CETA and the SPA will act as a model for future trade and political relationships between the European Union and third countries. It's also a potential model for the United Kingdom to base its future trade relationships with the EU around post-Brexit. So fighting international crime and terrorism, tackling climate change and ensuring continued space for economic growth and job creation in an era of globalization and technological change are all issues that cross borders, that are cross-border and can only be tackled by democracies like Canada and the EU member states working together. As these changes take effect, it's vital that we all work together to ensure that they work for all our citizens and do not allow our economies to drift towards the simple allure of nationalism, isolationism and protectionism that can only lead to less prosperity and security for our citizens. It's taken many years to reach today to conclude these deals, but as we are now finally moving in this House to ratify the SPA and CETA, it's clear that this time and effort has been very well worthwhile. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, colleagues. Uh, that closes our joint debate. I want to thank the Commissioner and uh, for you also for your cooperation in this lengthy and important debate, which is now closed, and we will move to the votes. Thank you.